ESPN's presentation of Thursday Night Primetime College Football is brought to you by Michelin. Watch College Game Day Saturdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and find out how you can win with Michelin and ESPN. And by Old Spice High Endurance Deodorant and Antiperspirant. Powerful protection for men. The first ever event in the history of the Mountain West Conference. The Commissioner Craig Thompson tossing the coin between Colorado State and BYU. Representatives and mascots from all eight schools on hand. The first toss, a specially minted coin at that, won by the home team, BYU. So the Cougars look to get to 2-0. Oh. The matchup against the team that's already 2-0 and, oh and in the top 25, Colorado State. Our matchup for Thursday Night Football. We welcome you to the start of the college football weekend, and it's going to be a great one. Hi, everyone. Mike Tirico, along with Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit. The Mountains were back here. We were here exactly one week ago and said, the best BYU players on defense. It's a different BYU. What happened? New offense. And Kevin Federick looked like a new man at quarterback. You know what? In his first two years as a starting quarterback here at BYU, he was heavily scrutinized by the public about his performance and also the lack of production from the offense. Well, this year, his senior year, he's got a new spread offense, and he's eager to silence his critics. He got off to a great start last week, throwing for 501 yards, and the amazing thing is bringing the team back and getting a big victory. Tonight he's going to face a Colorado State defense that struggled last week against Nevada, giving up over 490 yards passing offense alone. You don't think Kevin Federick's <laughs> eager to have uh, an opportunity tonight against this Ram defense? Now on the other side of the ball, Colorado State offensive line is used. They average 308 pounds per man. They outweigh BYU's front by 25 pounds per man. Watch them run directly at BYU. And here's a stat for you to keep in mind. If Colorado State win, runs for 150 yards, they're 32-4 and four under Sonny Lubeck. So the secret is run, Rams run. And that means run to Dr. Jerry Fudge. Thanks, Coach. You know, there's no question that Kevin McDougal is the heart and soul of the Colorado State Rams offense, but last week when he got injured against Nevada, a narrow five-point win, they were a different offensive football team. Here is McDougal early in the fourth quarter. He goes down and basically stretches an adductor muscle on the inside of his left leg. Now, just prior to coming out tonight, they were massaging that left leg, but in warm-ups, he did not look to be even near 50%, so I would doubt to see him participate at all tonight. In fact, Look for them to go with the true freshman. Yes, I said true freshman, Rashawn Saunders, to start the game. McDougal may not play at all. Mike? Oh, what a devastating injury that is for Colorado State. So it could be on the hands, or in the hands, of the true freshman, Sanders. Colorado State in white, BYU in those new uniforms that debuted last week. We had some threatening clouds over above the Wasatch a few minutes ago, but it looks like a nice night. Temperature in the 70s as Frank Rice stands with Dallas Davis ready to receive the kick. A new era in college football. The Mountain West Conference begins now. Owen oh, Potsman's kick goes through the end zone and a touchback. The Rams will start from the 20. The Home Depot, Colorado State starting lineup. Matt Newton is their quarterback. First year as a starter. Looked good against Nevada last week. We'll watch the running back position. They play an H-back who will move a lot with a couple of tight ends. Leon Smith, Davis, and Rice are good receivers. As for the guys up front, Justin Borvansky has filled in nicely at center. Lane Sapaia is the best offensive lineman for Sonny Lubick's team. Colorado State, the impressive win over Colorado at Mile High Stadium, 41-14. And a victory over Nevada much closer than they would have liked, 38-33, last week in Fort Collins. There's the freshman Sanders to the 28-yard line. He picked up eight. Taken down by the strong safety, Tyler Nelson. In front of Nelson, Satema Nolly and Byron Frisch, the defensive ends, were very active in the first game that went over Washington last week. The linebackers, Rob Mars, gets all the pub coming in. Jeff Holtry, a transfer from Michigan, played well in last week's game as well. And Hashi Robertson and Brian Gray are two very good cornerbacks. No stage right from the kid Sanders. Picked up seven early and on second and three. Flag is down as Newton throws. That can be ruled incomplete or complete. Will be ruled complete and out of bounds, but the flag is going to bring back whatever happened downfield. Pete Redstock was the man who caught the ball.
thing Colorado State wants to avoid here is penalties and not being able to run the football. Their offense is all about being able to run on first and ten, getting into the second and third and short. So a penalty like this puts them in sure passing downs, and that's not a good thing for that offense. Holding. Off hits. Repeat second down. Gerald Wright and most of the Mountain West officials are officials who performed in the WAC before this. There is Sonny Lubick, who's made such a difference in Colorado State and turns the reins over to a new quarterback this year, third time in three years, Matt Newton at the helm of this team. Newton, a junior, 6'3", 215, out of Englewood, Colorado, Denver suburb. After the penalty, second and 13. And Sanders... Not much there. Guys, the headline here is McDougal. They hoped he was going to play. They thought he was going to play. What's the difference without McDougal and with Sanders behind the quarterback, Newton? Well, first of all, there's a lot of experience, and the football team has a lot more fake than McDougal. But remember one thing about Sanders. This kid comes from the same league as Rashawn Salam. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. In San Diego, they played eight-man football in his league, but he was one of the few teams that played 11-man football. They think he could be a superstar someday. He's a great prospect. He breaks it to the outside much better than McDougal. On third and 11, they run with Sanders. Fourth down. Might be asking yourself, what is Colorado State doing in third and long and running the football? The thing about this team this year, young quarterback, young running back, they don't want to kill themselves early. Matter of fact, their offense is based on quarterbacks. Don't hurt us. Don't make silly mistakes. So you're just going to punt it away and allow their defense to try to get the ball back. Interesting. Second down and two. They threw the ball. That's why they're giving the ball up. Should have run it again. Dion Horenic is the punter. Sixth in the nation in average last year. Nice kick to Jerron Dabney back at the 32. Block in the back. This is coming back. Returned at 11 yards, but a block in the back against BYU. I think it was York Frierson who did it. It'll make the 48-yard punt seem even farther. There you get a look at Frierson. The, the, the first thing we talked about with Lavelle Edwards was special teams. He said that's the thing they wanted to make the correction from last week is getting better on special teams, not getting off to a good start. Here to ESPN presentation of Thursday night primetime college football is brought to you by Isuzu. We don't make cars because life is too big for cars. And by TGI Fridays. In here, it's always Friday. Spectacular scenery in the heart of the Utah Valley. You look at Rashawn Sanders being spoken to by Kevin McDougal, the senior who will sit out tonight, as you see, in street clothes because of the injury. Warmed up in practice, tried to go, and cannot. And Kevin Federick in the BYU offense ready to get going. If you were not with us last week for the game against Washington, Federick went to a shotgun with his BYU offense. It was a wrinkle they added in the offseason, and did it fit, I'll say, 501 yards, almost a 2-to-1 pass-to-run ratio in the victory over the Huskies out of the Pac-10. A flea flicker right off the gate. Not fooled is Clark Higgins, who brings down Federer at the 10. It was Higgins and Tony Colasione, the sophomore, in there for the stop. Clark Higgins is a man-child for the Colorado State defensive line. With this sack right here, he ties a career school record for sacks, which is phenomenal. He is their guy they'll look to all night to pressure. And don't forget, with BYU's offense, Aaron McCubbins and Ford Poston are their two concerns of the offensive tackle. So look for Higgins to have a big night tonight. On second and long. Federick looks long. Behind the secondary is Margin Hooks. The man Lee talked about in Sports Center to the 44. That's a pickup of 33. Uh, the reason why this works, Mike and Kirk, is the fact that they set up by scouting. Remember how many quick passes they hit to Hooks the other week? Mm -hmm. Well, Colorado State obviously checked it. Boom. They immediately go to a good call, which is a hitch and go to Hooks. 
He's the fastest man on the BYU team, and I still think he could be the difference in big plays here. Eight catches in last week's win, including a touchdown. It's BYU out of the bad down and distance to a nice spot on the field. Frederick quickly to Jonathan Pittman. Gains a couple of yards. Minutes to catch our breath and find out who's on the field for the Cougars. Kevin Federick, the quarterback. Fahu Tahi, the running back. Freshman will alternate with Luke Staley, who looked good in the last game. The receiving core, you've heard from some of them already. Carlos Nuno, one of three tight ends who will see action. And up front, the interior is the returning unit. They played well. The tackles didn't play great in the first game against Washington. And Colorado State has good defensive ends. Something to watch tonight. You see where BYU has to go for a first down over the ESPN first and ten line. And Donny Atuwaya gets very close, depending on the spot. Atuwaya, the senior from Hawaii, gets the first down against the Colorado State defense. Pollard and Hagens, you've already heard about Hagens, who tied Brady Smith's Ram record for sacks with his sack on the opening play. The big man they're missing in the middle is Ula Tuatelli. David Vickers is raw, small, and young. 37's got a tough night ahead of him. The defensive secondary, they like Eric Olson, 28, senior out of Ventura, California, who already has two interceptions this year. They picked up a first down, so from Ram territory, Federick out of the gun. Luke Staley runs it, and Olson greets him. To the sidelines and Dr. Jerry Punch. Mike, you mentioned the Rams are without the, the use of Ola Tuatella, their starting middle linebacker. David Vickers, the freshman, supposed to start in his place. Now, Vickers on the bench with an injured left ankle. They're trying to tape his left ankle. He says he verbally can go, but he's having a hard time putting any weight at all on that left ankle. So now they have to go to three deep for the middle linebacker spot. Devastating losses on both sides in key positions for Colorado State that likes to run and stop the run. Now without their best running back and middle linebacker. On second and six. Federick on the move to margin hooks. First down at the 30. The thing that this new offense for BYU does such a good job of is they like to read the cornerbacks. If they're off, soft in coverage, they're going to throw underneath them. And I think it's a verbal check at the line of scrimmage between the quarterback and the wide receiver. If they get up tight, they have the speed and the ability to go behind those cornerbacks. You want to keep an eye on that throughout the evening as well. Kirk, you're absolutely right because they blitzed from Federick's blind side and he came back to the short side. Great call. First and ten, BYU moving it well in our first five minutes. Swing to Staley. Got about three to the 27. Luke Staley caught four balls in the win over Washington. As we just talked about, especially Mike and Kirk, if you get guys that are hurt, you got to do some difference. Here they come with the blitz to the outside. Now, Federick sees this because it's to his side where he can see. He dumps it off quickly to Staley. Good play. They're going to go after Federick, it looks like, since they lost those good linebackers because they can't stop the run. They're going to have to put pressure on him. Josh Stewart, number 49 in white. A freshman is on the field for Colorado State. In the injury spot, we have movement on the BYU side. Bring it back five. Bunch of flags in the early going. Third and snap, false start. Offense remains second down. Kevin Federick, the latest in the line of great quarterbacks who've come through Lavelle Edwards' program. You see the impressive numbers. The man who's number seven on the all-time coaching wins list, 11 away from Tom Osborne. He's not bad here. He's won 80% of his games, 127 wins, and only 28 losses here at Purple. Cougar Stadium that didn't even exist before the Bell Edwards got here. Some confusion for BYU. There's eight on the play clock, and Federer forced to take a timeout. He's not happy that he had to do it. Five and a half gone by. First quarter, BYU driving. That is Josh Stewart, redshirt freshman out of Riverside, California. 
He's in the lineup because David Vickers was injured in this opening drive by BYU. Vickers was replacing Ula Tuatelli. Yeah. You know how you could tell Stewart was a red shirt? He had a tattoo. An incoming freshman would never have had a tattoo. He got it his first year for college. Exactly. There you go. Play eight of the drive. Federick has not missed a pass on this opening drive. Good looking freshman runner Staley is met at the 27 by Hagens. Olsen had him by the leg, and Pollard came to finish him off up top. Staley's a big, powerful back. They love both their true freshmen, and we were in here last week, Lee. I know that you felt that Luke Staley has that look to him as far as when you're a coach, you're looking for something special in a young back. Did you see the calves on that guy yesterday when you talked to him? Huge calves. He looked a little like you and me together. Exactly. His exactly. calves are bigger than your calves and my calves together. Oh. Third and seven. BYU eight of 13 on third downs last week and made some big ones late. Out of the backfield, that's who I am. Across the first and 10 line, it's going to be spotted as a first down for the Cougars. Blitz. One of the things that impressed Lavelle Edwards is the fact that Staley played more like an upper class. Right there, you notice how he picks up the blitz of the linebacker, Kirk, and allows the quarterback time to throw the football. He picks up the blitz, but again, I think that is a, a good job by the quarterback of finding his outlet right away because of the blitz coming in. And he's, They cannot account for everybody with this new spread offense. So he had, he's done a nice job here in this first drive of dumping the ball to the back side of the backfield. Atuwaya made a nice one-handed really? catch yeah. for 6'1", 245. Federick has to burn a second timeout. Norm Chow, the 22-year offensive coordinator here at BYU, is asking Ben Horton, the receiver, what was the problem? Horton was lined up wide to the far side. As, as you guys know, when you get all this fancy stuff about all these different formations, you got to, as you know, Kirk, you got to signal in who's in the game. Half the time, guys don't know who's going in the game. They've had more problems in the first seven minutes than they had the first game. I wonder why. Well, that's a good question. Maybe it's because of the uh, the scheme of Colorado State. Yeah. They came up with some different schemes on how they're going to attack Colorado State's uh, defensive game. Plan. And that time they had 10 players on the field. Down to the field, and here's Jerry Punch. Well, we told you Kevin McDougal wanted to try to play tonight, Kevin. We saw you trying to warm up, and it looked like you just weren't even going to be close to being 50%. Uh, I know it's going to be gut-wrenching to not be able to play. The leg wouldn't let you let you push off at all? No, I mean, uh, we tried everything we could during the week. I mean, a uh, short week didn't help at all. But, uh... Sometimes, you know, your, your body just doesn't co cooperate with you very much, and I uh, just wasn't doing it tonight. We saw you talk to the freshman running back, Rashawn Sanders, when he came up after the first possession. You sat down beside him, put your arm around him, and we're talking. What were you saying to him? I know, just tell him, you know, that's the first series. Uh, settle down, you know, don't worry about it. They're going to get some penetration. They're going to make big plays every now and then. Just relax, and uh, we'll be able to run the ball on these guys, I told him. Uh, just relax and uh, take what they can give you. Hey, get well soon. We look forward to seeing you back. I appreciate it. Nice talking to you. Kevin McDougall, guys, not going to play at all tonight. Mike? There, there's one guy, Jerry, who's upset that he's not playing, Rob Morris, the All-America candidate linebacker for BYU, who wanted to see those head-to-head -head collisions with the bowling ball back. Federick on first down. Hagan sets the all-time Colorado State record for sacks. We told you he needed two coming in. Even if he gets the half sack there, he will break Brady Smith's all-time record. When we sat down and visited him with we visited with him on Tuesday. One of the things he was excited about was having to contain Kevin Federick. Last week, Federick had such success rolling to his left, which is right towards Clark Hagan. He was excited because this is what he does. He is a he is known for coming up with big sacks and already two here in this first drive. Not bad. From walk-on to all-time sack leader at CSU. Intended for margin hooks. Amir Lowe was watching film. Maybe watched you Thursday night. No, it's a perfect example of good scouting. When they go to so many of those quick passes in one week, then the defensive backfield coach teaches them to jump on it. Remember, the hitch and go hurt that kid low first. This time he makes a good play. You know why? Because there's no hitch and go. Hitch and go, you run over to the seat of the Cougars to the phone sign over there. <laughs> he, also, he also had a safety behind him to help him, yeah. which probably allowed him to sit up there a little bit. There's a banner for some phone company in the back of the end zone. People can't see that. Oh, okay. I saw what you were talking about. Third and 18. And we're going to move.
quick throw will be flagged. McDougal, the leader, was right there. Well, they'll call it a late hit in the first down. That was really, really close. When the quarterback gets out of the pocket, he's just another runner. Real speed, so you can sense. Would you have thrown a flag? Oh, come on. Come on. That's terrible. That's t His foot's still in bounds. Exactly. Where are these officials from, Mike? <laughs> They're both Mountain West teams. Oh, so okay, the Mountain West. okay. So we can't start a rumor this week. No, no. Oh, okay, no. good. That was not a good call. That was an aggressive call by Crow. Good play by him. First and goal, BYU. Smiley stretched it out. Colorado State with the stop. BYU thought something was going on there, made the adjustment, but Colorado State comes up with the tackle. Clark Hagan's very active early. One of the luxuries of having an experienced quarterback for BYU is having, giving him the ability to make uh, make checks at the line of scrimmage. You look at the quarterback on the other side, and he doesn't necessarily have that opportunity. BYU, you will see that, especially when they get down into the red zone. Kevin Federal will make a lot of checks at the line of scrimmage. I saw them practice yesterday and they like a lot of crossing patterns down here keep your eye on Federick and crossing patterns back to Michael Westbrook Michael Westbrook no signal for a touchdown the ball is rolled out of the end zone and they'll say down at the half yard line I believe Greg Pollard made the hit. All trying to make sure they saw the same thing. Fans saw a replay on the screen. It's where the ball is when the player's knee hits the ground. Simple setup here, kind of a delayed screen to the left, and then all of a sudden they come back here to Westbrook. The linemen are there. Horton picks up the block. Looks like he's going to get the ball into the end zone. It actually looks like he crosses the goal line. The, the ground causes the fumble. I think his knee was down first. Actually. Yeah, yeah. He's not. That is not a fumble. Again, where the ball is when his knee hits the ground. I think mean, it's still shot. From that angle, hard to tell. Third and goal. On the 50th play of the drive, Luke Staley, touchdown. Staley, who impressed last week, as Kevin McDougal could only watch another running back find the end zone. Staley had two last week. Owen oh, Hutchman adds the extra point. And BYU is on top. Great drive. 15 plays. Big help from the late hit out of bounds. But good running by Luke Staley. BYU 7-0. spectacular setting that is a view you can get from the stadium Cougar Stadium which is rocking a little bit as the home team has taken a 7 nothing lead on a pretty impressive drive 79 yard drive that's their shortest touchdown drive of the year all five touchdown drives against Washington were over 80 yards Dallas Davis and Frank Rice await Owen Hopkins kick and we'll watch it go out of the end zone again Downstairs with Dr. Jerry Punch. With Mountain West Commissioner Craig Thompson. And Craig, what a great way to begin the conference. I mean, two ranked teams, unbeaten, national television, a sellout crowd. We just couldn't get any better than this. We really couldn't have scripted it better, Jerry. This is something we've been gearing up for uh, nine, ten months now since we started the league. But until you start playing, you don't uh, realize some of these things happening. 
the league accounted well for itself prior to the conference beginning with some big wins over Pac-10 and Big 12 schools. That's a real tribute to our coaches and our administrators. We've committed to play some schedules, and that's how we're going to build our image is the kinds of people we play and beat. Hey, Craig, congratulations on the great league. Thank you, Jerry. Mike? Jerry, on first down, Matt Newton's pass is incomplete, and you were talking about the league with Craig Thompson. For those of you who are not sure, the teams that have moved from the 16-team WAC to the 18 Mountain West, here they are. Air Force, BYU, Colorado State, New Mexico, San Diego State, UNLV, really the only team that wasn't an original WAC team that's in the Mountain West Conference, Utah and Wyoming. Good football schools, good basketball schools, more geographically sensible, and both head coaches, as we spoke to them this week, are thrilled with this new conference setup. The toss to LaShawn Sanders. Will be third and seven. Rob Morris would have much rather been tackling Kevin McDougal, but he'll hit anybody in Ram White tonight. It's interesting, after watching the practice session, they practiced all the plays against BYU did against McDougal's cutback. Now they have to change their philosophy. Kirk, but this kid's more of a bounce outside kid. Yeah, I talked with their offense coordinator this morning. They said when Sanders gets in there, they've got to utilize his speed to the outside. But here, once again, third and seven, that's not what they like as an offense. They're much better running. Newton. Incomplete. Pete Rebstock was covered very well by Jared Lee, but a marker's down after the play. Perhaps a late hit on Newton. So despite the nice coverage from Jared Lee, the defensive flag will keep the ball in the hands of the Rams. In a busy first quarter for Gerald Wright. Roughing the passer on the defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. Chris Hulk is going to come up here. You can see the penetration from the defensive line there. He mm. just comes in low. Anytime you come in low at a quarterback and go for that knee, chances are, whether it's late or not, you're going to get thrown for a flag there. But once again, you can see Matt Newton's inexperience. They've got to get the running game going or throw successfully on first and 10 to loosen him up. This is only his third career start. BYU line got back, so no problems. Sanders. Well, all of us who have seen Rashawn Sanders in practice and in the game film against Nevada were very impressed that for a true freshman not playing a high level of high school football, how good he looks running the ball. Interesting there, he runs the McDougal style. Starts to the right and goes back. He comes back to the right and makes a nice cutback. He, Jeff Holtree, the transfer from Michigan, overran the ball. Therefore, that's why Sanders has a chance to run up the middle. You see his numbers so far. You know, Rashawn Sanders' story is great, guys. He was exposed to Colorado State football by selling programs at the Holiday Bowl a couple of years ago, and now he's replacing a man who we saw running that Holiday Bowl in Kevin McDougal. He came from a small private school. Sonny told me today that he went there, he couldn't believe it. There's only 400 students in the whole school, and they played in this lousy league, but Rashawn Salam came from it. All of a sudden, the guy's a great player. They said he was the biggest player yeah. in the whole league. Biggest. Forget the lineman, forget everything. He's the biggest guy. At six feet, 210 pounds. He was just shy of the first down, so it'll be second and inches for Colorado State. Sanders crosses the line to get the first down. Getting close to the midfield. Well, here's our college football lineup on Saturday, college game day. Lee and Kirk will join Chris at the Swamp in Gainesville. Then at noon, Kentucky, Indiana, the old bourbon barrel battle. And Auburn and LSU at 5 Eastern. Auburn very fortunate to be 2-0, but they don't ask how, they ask how many. College football lineup Saturday here on ESPN. I know you guys are excited to get on the plane to Gainesville. It should be a terrific setting for Tennessee, Florida. Cannot wait. It is going to be uh, people down in Florida and Tennessee have been waiting a whole year for this game. Steve Spurrier has. <laughs> That's guaranteed. 
That's right. First and ten, Newton. Intercepted by Holtry. Jay Holtry has a sideline full of blockers. To the 13 yard line. Second interception of the year for Newton. Poultry, who has a national championship ring, a former member of the Michigan Wolverines with the pick. Once again, Matt Newton showing his inexperience. The H-back will come up vertically. You can see he thinks he has a seam here. As he drops back, he does not see Holtry drop into the zone. And then once Holtry makes the pick, now he's showing a little bit of athleticism, picks up some good blocks, and defensive players love to have an opportunity to block offensive players, and Holtry almost took that all the way into the end zone. Did you see who was down in Number 44, Rob Morris. Oh, he's looking to blow somebody up. <laughs> Morris used to be a fullback. That's right. Doman is in at quarterback. Federick is in motion. And BYU screwed up their wrinkle. You see Federick, number seven, the starting quarterback. He was in motion. Brandon Doman came in. Boy, that looked good in the meeting room, didn't it? It did. And it could look. <laughs> and I tell you what, it looked every time yesterday it went for a touchdown. <laughs> Anytime, oh. anytime Doman comes into oh. the game, expect an option, expect athleticism. They're going to try to utilize his, his ability. They said he can, he could probably be the starting free safety. He's that good an athlete. But he wants to play quarterback. <laughs> you see, Doman was very effective as a high school performer. Had three rushes for 18 yards against Washington. The first and 15 still inside the red zone. And it's Federick back at quarterback. Savita Opahawe jumped high to try to get over a tackler, and he enjoyed his carry very close to a first down for the junior out of Hawaii. Savita Opahengawe. No, I'm not going to take this one. That's a tight end. I'll just call him Tavita. But it's situation is, again, exactly what they did in practice all day. Watch the man crossing. They do a lot of crossing routes, and they, the reason they do that, they think they could get in the seams and confuse them. See that number six? Creole confused. <laughs> The whole key there is the protection. You've got to be able to give him time. When you're going to cross people all over the field, you've got to be able to have that quarterback have four to five seconds to make that read. Second and one for the first down, three for the touchdown. Fahu Tahi. It'll be first and goal for the Cougars. Fahu Tahi, the ball carry a very close to first down yardage. Tahi and Staley are the two running backs, and BYU fans can get used to those two freshmen. And now Staley's in the game. This is where Luke Staley last week really showed what he can do when the ball gets inside that five-yard line. He turns the corner very well with his speed, the tailback. Frederick looking for a tight end in the end zone. Dropped by Carlos Nuno. You saw him, spotted him, fired a strike. But Nuno, it's almost like the 250 pounds were going one way, and he had to stop and come back and get the ball. Just maybe a little bit too excited there. Kevin Federick rolling to his left, buying a little bit of time. You can see, again, the offensive line doing their job. He slides it right in there, perfectly thrown ball. And I think Nuno maybe, maybe worrying about a... You can't dance in college football, no, so don't. maybe he wasn't worrying about the celebration days. One of the things that Federick does well here is that he automatics against the defense. Tahi tries to turn the corner and essentially got knocked down by his own man. Looked like Doug Jolly coming out to try to block ran into him. Or Gabriel Reed. Watching the films. Rick Creole is a tremendous football player at 6'3", 240. He comes from the inside out, very good. Near the goal line, just keep your eyes on him. He makes all the plays. You watch him coming here as he comes inside out. Inside out means he's coming inside, 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 and then he hits him right, boom, right there. Nice defensive play by Rick Creole. Nice job of him chasing, but give number 90, Greg Pollard, a lot of credit for stretching that play. He did everything he could contain the running back. Third and goal. Blitz coming. 
Here they come. Confederate beat it. No! John Howe from the secondary will force a field goal attempt for BYU. That's a nice job by Colorado State's defense. First and goal from the two, and BYU doesn't get in. Maybe something to spark the Rams. You could kind of tell that because of the injuries and some of the things that they've had to go through early in this game, a little bit lifeless. Maybe this could spark them and, and maybe get them going a little bit as far as momentum's concerned. One thing I've seen in two weeks, Luke Staley is a better inside runner on a goal line than Fahu Tahi. He's got a little bit more quickness. I think he's got more power, but he get, doesn't get to the outside. Owen Oxman from 30 yards missed his two kicks last week. And another one blocked. Couldn't get the sideline, but Clark Hagen's big hands got in there to knock it away. First and goal with a two, and BYU does not score. Here I am talking about a spark for, hey, they held him inside. Now they end up blocking a field goal. See if this offensive line, because that's what Colorado State has to do, is the offensive line's going to set the tone and allow them to run the ball. With or without McDougal, they've got to be able to run this football. Notice, against the soccer kicker, you guys, they always come up the middle because he doesn't get the ball high enough, quick enough. Hey, they had a problem up the middle with Washington last week. Exactly. Oh, every kick was an adventure. Watch here. Watch it up the middle. See up the middle? Boom. 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 That's a pretty good 12 and a half minutes for Mr. Hagens. Two sacks and a blocked field goal. Sanders runs on first down. Gains about three or four yards. This is what happened to BYU's special teams last week. Nearly cost them the game. They missed field goals, everything. And what's amazing is typically when you come back and you sit down with a the coach, they want to talk about the offense or the defense. Eventually you start talking about the kicking game and the special teams. The first thing Lavelle Edwards brought up was they have got to improve in that special teams. And again, early in this game, it's been a problem. Second and eight. See if Newton can gain some confidence. High throw to Redstock. Pete brought it down a couple of yards short of the first down. Pete Repstock, 5'9", sophomore, seven catches in the first couple of Colorado's. Look at him. Look how small he is compared to the other guys. Uh, he's going to have to be able to beat man coverage today because Colorado State, you're going to find them facing an eight- and nine-man front because BYU has so much confidence in their cornerbacks that they'll put everybody in the box to try to stop this running game. They've got to make some plays. Hey, Mike, look. It's my guy. He's 5'9". I like him. He's not by You could eat spaghetti off his head. He's so short. You could. <laughs> Third and three. Looks like he didn't get it off to me. They didn't. Not an incomplete pass. It will be the delay of game. The flag was in the air before the snap. Newton's going to face third and eight. He is not settled in just yet. We have a dead ball, delay, offense, remains, third down. Split the country four ways for ABC Sports College Football. The old horseshoe, in comes Ohio for the first time in nearly a century. Kansas, Colorado in the Big 12. NC State, can they keep it going? They face Florida State. And San Diego State, USC, Ted Tola returns to battle the Trojans. Check your local listings or just... Call up the ESPN game plan. Bounce around and watch all the games on ABC this weekend. Third and eight. Red stock was open, but the ball was five yards over his head. Even if he was 6'9", he had no chance. <laughs> right now, Matt Newton is having a tough time settling in early in this game. Big crowd. You can see that he's very indecisive back in the pocket. He's hesitating. Pump fakes, pump fakes. There he had a wide open wide receiver. Give him some time here, and maybe by that second quarter, he's got a few series under his belt. He'll be able to make some throws. One of the things BYU do is, is doing, they're blitzing him more. An experienced quarterback, go after him. Jerome Dabney waits for Dion Horanis. From the 22, very well done. Brett Nelson, the reserve defensive back, made a spectacular tackle, didn't violate the two-yard zone, and made the play. Colorado State's defense comes back on the field, and this man's had a game in the first quarter alone. Uh, in, the, in the first few series here, he has been able to dominate 
He's going up against Aaron McCubbins. You can see the quickness here. First play of the game, he does not quit. The coaches say his motor, he's relentless. That's what separates him. Also, look at the hands. Once he locks up that quarterback, it's done. The quarterback goes down. He is one of the finer defensive ends out on the West Coast. First and 10. Benarich, who got beat up last week by Washington, takes a hard hit after eight yards there. Amir Lowe, the initial stop. Well, one thing for sure, Roger French was not lying to us when he said he thought Colorado State's front defensive line was much better than Washington. They're putting a lot more pressure on Roger French's offensive line than they did Washington did. I think a lot of that has to do with, that's a great point, Coach, and I think a lot of that has to do with the way the secondary, they're throwing a bunch of different looks. That's one of the things that Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator for Colorado State, said they had to do. They don't have enough talent. They've got to be able to mix up coverage and keep Kevin Fetter guessing what he's doing. After one, in the shadows of the Wasatch, the debut of the Mountain West, Cougars by seven. Kevin McDougal spent much of the break between the first and second quarter talking to the freshman Rashawn Sanders just trying to settle him in the game. Colorado State's offense is wobbling. Lucky to be down only seven to BYU. First down run for Luke Staley to the 35-yard line. As the change moved the numbers in the first 15 minutes. BYU threw it better. Colorado State ran it better. What you expect out of these teams. But Colorado State needs a much better rushing advantage against BYU to have success tonight. Clark Hagens and the defense have been asked to do a lot in the first 15 minutes. First and 10 in shotgun with five receivers and no backs. Good pressure from the ends again. Margin Hooks dropped it. The junior out of Waco, Texas. Second and ten for Lavelle Edwards. Lee, you saw Lavelle Edwards' team on Tuesday out here, their full practice before the game. Still impressed with the way they run a practice, this veteran coaching staff. Tremendously impressed with the way they handle a practice. Also, I told Lavelle he could coach to 100 the way he handles practice. He sat in a golf cart. Talked to the phone, signed a couple of autographs, and said hello to me. But it was beautifully organized. They don't need him. They need him to just show up for the games. Second and ten for Federick. Oh, just missed time to break it up the pass, but Hicks, Hooks caught it for the first down. Amir Lowe has been gambling, and he's one for three on his gambles. Well, Lee, you mentioned Lavelle Edwards. Sonny Lubick is in his 60s as well. Look at the coaches in this new 18 Mountain West Conference. Ted Tolner and Ron McBride at Utah are both 59. Robinson, DeBerry, Lubick, and Edwards are in their 60s. I brought my AARP card to show you guys just what to it's prove like. it, right? But just to prove it, but those two guys that are 59, we'll get them in next year. <laughs> I'll send them an application. Oh, right, good guy you are. You know that? First and 10 BYU. Frederick working a lot of the underneath stuff to midfield for Ben Horton, the junior. This is a completely different attack for BYU this week thus far. They're going to have to nick one dime the Colorado State defense. They're, Colorado State is just trying to keep everything in front of them. Not allow the big play. Don't let any of the receivers get behind them. So far, the plan has worked. It's kind of the old school bend but don't break type of defense until you get down to the red zone and then hope you can make some plays. Norm Chow calling a lot of those plays on the sidelines, sending them in. For second and six, it's back out of the gun into the air. Luke Staley. To the 25. And the Colorado State players shaken up after the 25-yard pickup. I know I said it to you last week, but I'm going to say it again. Every play they put this guy on the bench, they're making a mistake. This guy is a game-breaker. He's going to be a tremendous football player. He's exploded. Remember one thing about the guy they told us? He was the player of the year in the state of Oregon. So he's a good football player. He gets a nice screen, shows the hands, gets away from everybody. Here's his speed to get away 
from number six and goes all the way down the field. I like that guy because, not, and look at that look. Is he a tough looking guy or what? Look at that, look at that look right there. Come on, come on. You want him on your side. Absolutely. I would never take him off, unless he really got tired, I wouldn't take him out of the game. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> 6 one two, 20. Injury for Colorado State is Rick Kroll. The linebacker position where they're banged up, getting worse. ESPN presentation of Thursday night primetime college football is brought to you by Killian's Irish Red, which reminds you one look says a lot. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping you live a safer, more secure life. Well, this is certainly the best booth in college football to work from. You get to look out at the mountains as the game goes on. Perfect time of day as well. Rick Kroll looked like he injured his shoulder as he walked off the field. So two starting linebackers not in there for Colorado State. BYU driving again, but five-yard penalty will cost him. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, remains first down. It could be in this situation, if you've seen Federick yelling at the official, that the Colorado State is using some kind of a call on defense that sounds like the snap cut. They must, because, Kirk, remember, BYU didn't have this problem last week no, at all. They, they're looking a little sluggish yeah. uh, this week in comparison to last week, especially offensively. See BYU five penalties already here tonight. Colorado State, with a little confusion, has taken time out. We'll step out with them. All right, boys, last chance. Getting sick here. Let's get the game going. Be right back. Back at, back at Kruger Stadium, Rick Kroll, the senior weak side linebacker for Colorado State, having come off the field, now being looked at by the doctors. The concern is, is his left shoulder, a possible strain on the left shoulder. When they went to him on the sideline, they thought he might have had a mild subluxation or even dislocation. That was not the case. They're going to hold him out for a series or two and try to get him back in, and he is definitely a need player for their defense here for Colorado State. Mike? That's right, Jerry. Already, Ula, Ula Telly is out, and David Vickers got hurt. Right at the very start, all Colorado State linebackers. First and 15 for BYU. Federick looking for hooks, nearly intercepted. Eric Olsen came over from his strong safety spot and nearly picked it off. Now, one of the things that I talked to Sonny Lubick about this morning is, watch this. They're going to play a nickel back. They've got five defensive backs in there, and the defensive secondary moves to the football. This thing, guess who coaches the defensive secondary for Colorado State? Sonny Lubin. He loves to still coach those guys, and he enjoys it very, very much. Again, you get back to Colorado State mixing up the coverage, yeah. keeping Kevin Fetter getting, keeping him, uh, not allowing him to get into rhythm. Second and 15. Inside run with Ned Stearns across the 20-yard line. Flag down on the play as well, Stearns. Got a carry last week. Because of injury, they have a couple of players down on the depth chart. It's a face mask on Colorado State. Personal foul, face mask, defense, half the distance to the goal, first down. Take you down to the 10-yard line. You notice that shot, you guys. Sonny Lubick told me he wears the headsets only when they're on defense. You remember, he was a defensive coordinator for Miami. He was a secondary coach. And guess who the linebacker coach was? Tommy Tuberville. They coach on the same defensive staff at Miami. He had a great defensive staff. He still loves to coach defense. He was at Miami from 88 to 92. In that stretch, the Canes went 44-4. Changed it. Gave it to Staley, who got down to the seven. Pollard and Mike McKenzie in on the tackle. They rotate three players in that defensive tackle spot for Colorado State. Colorado State has good 
good pursuit, outstanding speed. And you can see there that Pollard McKenzie would not quit, even though the ball went away from him. Determination to get there. This defense is known for getting into the red zone and making plays, creating turnovers. Touchdown drive earlier was 15 plays. This is the 10th drive now. 10th play of this drive, I should say. touchdowns against Washington, a rushing touchdown in the first quarter, a receiving touchdown in the second quarter. BYU looking smooth. Luke Staley, four touchdowns in BYU's first five and a half quarters. All they do is score on long touchdown drives. 79 for the first one. 77 for this one. Colorado State injuries on defense offense struggling to find its rhythm needs to make some things happen here beyond the kickoff three kickoffs all out of the end zone from Potsman and back to the BYU touchdown here's a perfect example of what not to do with Clark Hagans he's the best pass rusher they got right so they got cute and they dropped them off man for man on Staley forget about it now watch this as he comes out watch him the best pass rusher in the world is playing over there in pass coverage he has no idea look <laughs> goodbye Higgins let me tell you something Kirk you played with guys and I'm telling you right now some guys you played it make big plays this kid makes big plays you got to turn him loose and let him get after the but that's part that's their whole scheme his own blitz Newton fires high and late over the middle Lucky that it's rolling on the ground instead of in a Cooper's hands. Dwayne Ruff, a sophomore, is coming at running back for Colorado State. Rashawn Sanders, the freshman's on the bench. Matt Newton won the quarterback job in camp. He had a good camp. He's more confident now with a couple games under his belt. But you can see he's still a little bit great. He's still a rookie as far as game experience. He's having a tough time getting started here in the early part of this game. Run to Ruff. Lane Ruff gets about three yards. He's had 23 carries this year. ESPN 2's college football lineup. Check with the folks in College Park in Charlottesville. And the storms didn't leave enough rain to delay play. So we'll see you for West Virginia, Maryland on the deuce. And Wake Forest, Virginia in the ACC. Morgan Kane, the 211 yards against Army. We'll see Morgan Kane in the Wake Forest rushing attack against the Cavs trying to bounce back after their loss to Clemson. Saturday on the Deuce. Follow college football at ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network. Go.com. Third and seven. They run rough. They run the punting unit onto the field. They're just not going to roll the dice. Third and seven in deep territory here. Third and seven. And I want you to count how many people are in here for BYU. They've got everybody. They don't respect the fact that Newton has the ability to throw the ball at this point. I don't care who the offensive line is. You cannot block eight and nine different people inside the box. They'll continue to do it all evening long until Newton starts to hit a few passes. And psychologically, it doesn't help your offense when it's third and seven and you run the ball. Huh? They've been doing that all night? It doesn't help when you have ten guys on the field for a punt which Colorado State just had, and they had to burn another timeout. Each team has burned two here in the first half. 
It's been one-sided so far for BYU. Colorado State offensively just having a tough time. You know, they, it, it, when they lost Kevin McDougal early in the game, and they thought maybe there was a chance. If we were in their team hotel, they, they were kind of excited, thinking he was going to be able to give the effort. They find out in warm-ups that he's not going to be able to go. You can see they lost their leader. They lost a guy they like to turn to. And when you're deep, your offense is all about running the ball, and you lose your guy, it makes it tough to respond, especially with a young quarterback. And it certainly looks like, like it or not, if you're a Colorado State fan, if you've got to win the ball game strictly with Matt Newton, you're going to have a long year. McDougal looks like he'll make a good running back. Yeah, he's but a heck of a coach. Now. Not now, say the Rams fans. You know, he lost, he missed three games last year, but they won two of the three. Dion Horanek punting to Jerome Dabney. <laughs> 50 yard kick, flagging down. If the tackler was too close to Jerome Dabney. It was Brett Nelson who made the good special teams play earlier. We've had two weeks of college football. I'm already tired of this rule. I, I, you know, I can understand protecting the punt returner, but the, the flag was thrown before the guy, before caught the the ball. guy even yeah, had a chance yeah. to catch it. Here's Jerry Punch. He's in a number of twins, and uh, so... Yeah, I told her if she gets real excited, we'll have a baby. We'll have another first tonight uh, on Thursday night college football. Another right. first for the Mountain West Conference. How about that, guys? <laughs> that would be good, right, Don? That'd be good. Oh, it's a great story. Thanks, Jerry. Federick on first down. Caught by Margin Hooks, who stays in bounds across midfield. We'll mark him out at the 49. Give him 18 yards. There is the soon-to-be father, Holtry. The long snapper on the national championship team, Michigan Wolverine, still wears his Rose Bowl watch. I asked if he's shown any of his BYU teammates the national championship ring. He said it's too big to wear, but I've shown some of the guys. Just, just want you to see his little pull piece of jewelry I have. You never yeah. know. Just pull it out. A little inspiration. He met his wife in Ann Arbor, and as you see, he's from Salt Lake City, so a more comfortable situation for them to come back here and start a family. And Jeff says he still has a lot of friends back in A squared and roots for the Wolverines. And Wants to watch him on TV. The run with Stearns. Not much for Ned. Both teams going deeper into their depth chart because of running back injuries. Colorado State's defense, even though they're down 14 to nothing, they give great effort. And again, the backside pursuit. Hagan's there once again, not giving up, showing that besides coming up with sacks, he can get after it as well on runs. Second and eight. In the flat, Staley. To the 38, actually, that's Donnie Atuwaya. The senior out of Hawaii. Now, Sonny Lubick had told me at, this morning when I met with him, with the linebacker situation the way it was, that he would play more nickel defense. And he's playing some nickel now, but I would not be surprised if BYU doesn't run more at him, Cook, because they got a nickel back in there, and they can run right at him more. see where they need to go to pick up the first down. No flag, uncatchable. Eric Olsen with the head. Olsen trying to get his team fired up comes up here. They, they, the thing that they feel most confident about is their safeties. The way they can come over. That's where they like to sit in the cover two and play a lot of zone defense. Here they get behind Gibson. Ball is not catchable, but Olsen, just to make sure, lights up Westbrook. They were playing man other that time with Terrence Gibson on the receiver with zone behind him. That might be a nice little matchup. That might be the best way to stop these guys. Jesse Sowers into punts and Colorado State has ten guys on the field again has forced to take another timeout. 
their last. Perhaps the injuries in the linebacking core is affecting the special teams unit. Five of the six timeouts have been used by these two teams in the first half because of wrong personnel. BYU won its opener here, 35-28. They lead 24th-ranked Colorado State, 14-0, and play Virginia next week. Sowards to punt again. Colorado State with 10 at the line. Sowards tried to get it out of bounds, but did so a little farther upfield than he had hoped. This ball is going to be marked down the 19-yard line. Not a very good kick from Sowards. All right, you guys have been in the situation like Colorado State is. They expected McDougal. They need him to run the ball. They come out of the tunnel and they find out McDougal can't play. Is that one of the reasons we're seeing Colorado State kind of pick up tonight? Well, they are a team that has to be able to run the football. When you lose your go-to guy and you're relying on a true freshman, even though he's looked okay in the first couple games, it's a totally different thing when McDougal is gone and you're turning to him to get it done. I think it's affected them and their attitude here early, early going. Talk about true freshmen. Luke Staley's the star of the game. He's a true freshman for BYU, right? Sure is. Scored both of the touchdowns. Rashad Sanders, the true freshman running for Colorado State. After watching a series from the sidelines, gains about a yard. That was a perfect example where our buddy, Rod Moore, I mean, excuse me, mm -hmm. Morris loves to play football from the inside out. And here he comes, if you watch him right here, he comes from the inside out. Watch him. Inside, 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 and then he sticks him. Watch him. See, he's got his eye on him. Got his eye on him. Now watch. Boom! Right there. Perfect play of inside so that the guy couldn't cut back on him. Last guy I saw do that was old Katzen one. <laughs> Very similar. Very similar. That's good. He's the same kind of guy. Second long. There's a first down pass finally for Matt Newton, the quarterback. Svoboda, the wide receiver, sophomore out of Illinois, Brad Svoboda, who was shaken up after the 11-yard pickup. Last thing Colorado State needs is more interest. Yes. Newton has plenty of arm strength there. You, you can see he shot that in there. It, I think he's just he's lacking confidence in, in getting into game circumstances such as this and thinking he's going to be able to deliver, especially now that the team is relying on him with McDougal down. There he's, he just does a nice job of finding the hole in his own. Receiver settles in there and they pick up the first down. Maybe that'll help again settle him down because he has plenty of ability to lead this team down the field. The one thing we saw in films of him, but he's really a bird dog. When he comes back, he looks at the number one receiver and stays with him, Kirk. Yep. I wonder why that is. Inexperience. Yeah, I think it's inexperience. I, I think a lot of times you see young quarterbacks that get out there first time they're getting into a hostile environment even though he he led this team to a victory against Colorado a mile high that was the defense created most of the uh, the opportunities there for the offense here he's in a tough environment he's got to make throws and his go-to guy in the backfield isn't there to help carry the load Svoboda comes off the field under his own power as the first down picked up was the third for Newton and company you know a team wins 41-14 and you think Oh, your quarterback must have played great. <laughs> he didn't play terrific in that game. They didn't give him a lot that he had to do in that game. They played much better against Nevada. 312 yards and three touchdown passes. With all due respect to the guys in Reno, the Scooter defense is better. Now he's looking a little more settled in. First fire to Dallas Davis, Jr. out of Fort Collins, Colorado. 14 yards and another first down. Sunday Night Football on ESPN. The Jets without Vinny Testaverde. Doug Flutie and the Bills, somebody will be 0-2 after this game at 8.15 Eastern Time. Then Monday night on ABC, it's the Atlanta Falcons, the defending NFC champs against the Dallas Cowboys. ABC and ESPN, your exclusive home for the National Football League in primetime this fall. The first down run with Sanders across the 50. That's much more like the Colorado State offense. First down, good run. A lot of that has to do with they were able to throw the football, loosen up the defense, get them back a little bit. It allows the, the, the running game to open itself out there. That's, as you said, Mike, that's a little bit more like Colorado State, picking up four and five yards on first, and first down, putting them in second and third and short. Google watches. Sanders operates. And Colorado State down in distance, second and four. 
Pass was intended for John Eulen. Tyler Nelson hit the turf hard. Now, uh, isn't this interesting? I criticized them for second down and short in the first quarter for throwing the ball. They got a holding penalty, right? They had to punt it. Yo, second down, short. They throw it again, holding. They, you're not going to win this game throwing the ball on second and short. You got to make first downs. Holding. 70 on the offense. Repeat, second down. Well, the WAC officials from time to time used to let a number slip out. The uh, Western Athletic Conference, which these two teams were a member of before the Mountain West, was very proactive. They wanted the players' numbers to be announced because the coaches are always yelling, who was it on? Who was it on? They said, well, just do it. We do it in college basketball. We do it in every other college sport. Maybe the Mountain West officials forgot. It's, so like, the old it's kind of like it slipped there. They would always yeah. do it once on a national TV game just to let you know that, hey, we think it should be done. Capital Green. Second and 16, Sanders is stopped. Junior out of Santa Ana, California, Chris Hoke made the play. Chris Hoke just shoots right through the A gaps and able to come up with a big play. He's been doing this throughout the game early. That's just beating your man, man on man, and showing better quickness and, and determination. Remember when Ken Schmidt, the defensive coordinator, said they were going to do a lot more slanting to Tennessee? That's a slant, ladies and gentlemen. Line up one way and inside, make the move. Third and long. Looking for their first third down pickup of the night. Newton's running for his life. I guess somebody was out there trying to catch the ball. Fourth down. I'm going to make a statement again because I don't want anybody to think I'm that dumb. Second down and four. They got to run the ball twice to make a first down. Twice on second down and four they've thrown it and they've punted the thing twice. I have a holding penalty. Jeez. Kirk, you got to keep the ball away from BYU. Eight the clock up. That's what you talked oh, about in the open. Absolutely. Can keep the ball away from it. Right? Anybody calls you dumb, send them to me. Buddy. Well, I just want to make sure. I understand. I understand. I got his guard on Saturdays, right? <laughs> got his back. I take care of him. Dion Horenic's kick. Dabney fumbled it. Now here's what's going to happen. They're going to call the two-yard halo violation here. And the Colorado State player had no clue where the ball was. Dabney was on a desperate run just to get to the ball. Didn't I just tell you I'm tired of this rule? I am yeah. with you. You guys both. Herbie. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure the interpretation. The rule is good. Yeah, Protect the puck. Yeah, okay. It's just the interpretation. The guy's chasing the ball everywhere. Yeah. Oh, he's running into the gunner yeah. who's coming downfield. Bad call. Uh, it's the call by rule. It, 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 he, yeah. it's the, he's calling it by the book. It's not his fault there. It's just... You're right. The interpretation of the rule should be different. Bad call from a standpoint of, look at the, the, the man returning. <laughs> and, I mean, draw that up there. Wait, that, that, that's all that's that's crazy. crazy. He, he absolutely <laughs> is trying to find a ball. Dabney has no idea. And now he's backing up to get away from him. Yeah. That's, you've and got I, no chance. You, it, it, it hurts you totally. Understand that with 538 to go to the half, Colorado State desperately in need of something to happen to turn the momentum of this game. Just had an opportunity, and they didn't get it. That's Hashi Robertson, who last week had a special teams error. The punt fell off his leg, went into the end zone. He tried to desperately recover it, thinking he could without penalty. It ended up a Washington touchdown. Luke Staley to the 39. Right at the first down line, Amir Lowe in on the tackle. That time, the left offensive side of Aaron McCubbins and John Skiba. Nice Got blocking. Uh-oh. Staley a little hobbled. Watch him come off the ball right here, and a tight end gets a good block, but they see him right there. They make a good play because they knocked it. You didn't see any defensive lineman from Colorado State, and the whole picture knocked him right off the line. Second and short. Bahu Tahi comes in to get the first down, but he lost the ball. Picked up by Terrence Gibson of Colorado State, but they rule him down. No fumble, no touchdown, McDougal. BYU first in 10.
David Vickers, who was injured early, made the initial hit. Sonny Lubick's waiting for a break to come his way. See if this ball... Uh, <laughs> not, I say no, I'm not going to say anything. Say nothing. I'm not going to say anything. Where'd you say these guys were from, these officials? Mountain West. Ouch. Look at McDougal. It might be a good league for something, but the officiating is hurting, my friend. Two plays back-to-back -back that have killed the Rams here. BYU continues the drive from its own 44. Down the middle, Federick, a nice throw to Ben Horton, who lost the ball right in the hands of Chris Hale to the 25. It is all going BYU's way. Coach, you can relate to this. You talk about ripping your guts off. Uh -huh. You get a couple breaks like that, they go against you. Next thing you know, you get a third opportunity, and the ball lands, and they pick up another five to ten yards. This is one of those drives that if they end up going up 21 to nothing, going into halftime, after all these opportunities that have not been uh, given to Colorado State, you're going to look back at this being a uh, pivotal point in this game. I'll tell you, we're going to start spending time around Chris Hale. Yeah, he's the man. Good he's things happen around yeah. Chris Hale. We'll remind you why in a second. The 25, setting up the screen for Margin Hooks. It was read well by Amir Lowe. Right now, from a Colorado State point, defensive coordinator is just hoping if anything they can do is force them into a field goal. If they can force them to a 17 nothing lead, they got something to talk about at halftime. We mentioned Chris Hale. Last week, it was Chris Hale who caught the touchdown on what essentially turned out to be a broken play in the fourth quarter with about minute 15 left to give BYU the margin of victory over Washington. And I haven't seen him on the field before that play, and a fumble rolled right in his hands. Second and 12. A run with Hatsuaya. Ronnie gets it to the 20. If you were not with us last week, Washington had rallied to take a 28-27 lead. Federick was forced to roll out. Hale, who had seen very few snaps, a walk-on, whose son is, whose father is the athletic director here at BYU, caught the game-winning touchdown pass. Not a bad way to make your first ever career reception. I think it was a good week on campus for Chris Hamm. On third and four. Ned Stearns runs for the first down. And Jeff Staley back in the game. Staley's ankle must not have been too bad. He came right back in and gets a first down. There they take, they, they took rather a page out of Colorado State's offense. They're stretching the defense, allowing Staley to get to the outside and then boom, pop it in underneath. And uh, that's just zone blocking. As soon as you find that hole, you're going to be able to take advantage of it. You just shoot it in there for the first down. And the way to stop the play was good linebacker play. And they don't have any of their good linebackers. Everybody's hurt. Everybody's hurt. Ned Stearns. His knee was on the ground at the 23. Eric Pollard, the other defensive end, along with Clark Higgins, quick into the backfield that time. Both defensive ends for Colorado State have tremendous quickness. Get up field and cause havoc in the backfield for opposing offenses. You know, they moved Pollard from, from defensive tackle out to the outside. And, so far this year, he's had, a, uh, he's had a lot of success with that move. When they spread the field out like this with five backs, they like those seam cuts we talked about. Everybody running up the areas. Brandon Doman's in the game at quarterback. Federick's a wide receiver. Doman's on the run. To the 15. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. As the players are being separated on the field, the news still not good for Colorado State linebacker Rick Kroll. They were hoping to keep him out one series and get him back in right now before the first half was up, but that will not be the case. They're going to take him to the locker room at halftime, take his shoulder pads and uniform off, and try to evaluate that left shoulder. He's already wearing a harness on the right shoulder, but the left shoulder was the one he injured here. They will look at him at halftime. He will play no more here in the first half. Hey, Jerry. 
Jackie Run and Dabney is checked in the game in the backfield on third and 11. Federer to Dabney. Touchdown! on to make it 21 nothing Cougars. <laughs> Federick over 200 yards already. Another couple of touchdown passes. The season totals at five through six quarters. Here you're going to see Colorado State bring the blitz. Another outstanding job by Kevin Federick, recognizing and Vickers, David Vickers, the young freshman, could not get out there in time as it's their senior experience again by the quarterback, finding the man, the outlet on the blitz, dumping it to him and letting Dabney do the rest of the work. And they like Dabney on that place. He's got good hands, but he's also got good quick speed. 5'7", 165, come out a really good, go, nice, runs a nice pass. One, one more half, one more half. One passing yards last week, 202 already tonight. He's spreading the ball around. They're throwing the ball successfully. But have you noticed a different feel from this BYU offense tonight? We met with Norm Chai yesterday. One of the things he mentioned is we need more balance. We've got to be able to run the football more effectively throughout this year to get into the style of offense that we really want. And so far, you're seeing that. You're seeing them try to establish that running game. That's only going to open up the passing game that much more. Jerome Dabney, who missed last year, violated the honor code of BYU. Thought about not returning to BYU, but got his grades and his academics back in order, and all parties are happy on the way the offseason worked out. A rare returnable kick. Frank Rice with no room to the 16. Moments away from the original Coors halftime report and the original Mountain Man, Chris Fowler. Well, Michael will give the Rams a chance to regroup, perhaps the officials as well. Mike Gottfried, Rod Gilmore join me. We'll break down the balls and the Gators. Some predictions from our low-maintenance team here. Also, the halftime blitz features another Mountain West team, Air Force, trying to put hurt on the Huskies. And, of course, hidden video. Stay with us, won't you? Take it from the expert. He knows what low maintenance is. Did he there. say low maintenance? Yes. Okay. As always, right. Fowler. Okay, we'll see him tomorrow. Smooth and error free. On first and ten. Don't make a mistake here, guys. Newton to Dallas Davis. First down. <laughs> this point they just want to try to get anything they can on the board Dave Dallas Davis is his go-to man he's not been able to look to him very often tonight Colorado State has a long way to go here to get back into this ball game but going into the locker room they've got to get something here on the board coming up enjoying the crowd this is a very good atmosphere for college football Lavelle Edwards was telling us that he was an assistant coach for 10 years before his now uh, two and a half decades plus as the head coach and he said when I when I came here they didn't have this Cougar Stadium we were lucky to get 10,000 and if it was deer hunting season you'd get 2,500 women and children only yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how far he has been able to bring this football program Newton to Rice. Frank's knee was down, and Rob Mars says, move the clock, Mr. Official. Be what, third down with a half minute. One thing they haven't done, they haven't tried to stretch it, the defensive secondary yet. I'd like to see him throw one long one to Frank, right? Even if it's intercepted, at least gets the guys back. Especially here on third down. Punting situation with 19 seconds to go. Brad Svoboda back in the game was the intended receiver. 
you get that feeling that when Colorado State gets down, it's trouble. It's kind of like the old Oklahoma offense with Jamal Holloway or Charles Thompson. When they got down, wasn't very often, but if they ever did get down, maybe a Miami or somebody in one of those bowl games, they couldn't come back. They didn't have the ability to throw the ball. I'll give you a stat that's going to kill you. Don't turn off the television. But when they're losing at halftime, they're 5-17 and 17 under Sonny Lugar. <laughs> Can't throw. So why should they watch the second half? Because they might get one of those five <laughs> and make it six. This punt will be down at the 21 with seven seconds left. Colorado State, six possessions this first half, five punts, one interception, and Kevin Federick's going to start putting up some numbers here, guys, that are going to look better than any quarterback numbers in the country if this keeps going. Uh, he is so accurate, and he makes so many good decisions. And this new offense, you can see that he, the experience just helps him. He's a polished veteran quarterback, and this is, this is not going to go away. Teams on their schedule better be ready to face a very, very dynamic offense led by this young man, Kevin Federick. Remember, Norm Chow said the most impressive thing was the receivers caught the ball real well. Federick takes a knee and take it to the locker room. Five incompletions, two touchdowns. No Kevin McDougal. No luck for the Rams at the half in the Mountain West. BYU 21-0. Here's Chris Fowler with the original Coors halftime. He has been more effective than he's ever been as the BYU quarterback. The first six minutes, Mike, it's very important to set the tempo. They get defense at least. Maybe they can force a turnover and then get back in the game. C.W. Hurst, first kickoff of the night. Jerome Dabney will take a knee, and we'll go to Jerry Punch. Guys, you've got to admire Sonny Lubick in the locker room at halftime. A very inspirational speech to both his offense and his defense, and he talked about keeping their heads up and about how proud he was of how hard they've tried to play in the first half and ignore some of the officiating calls they've gotten. They've got to play hard and come bring this thing home as a win. They have lost, by the way, Rick Kroll, their weak side linebacker, so two of their starting linebackers are gone. And he told me, coming out of the locker room, we're going to play the second half with three redshirt freshmen playing on defense. He went each one of those guys individually and told them how proud he was of what they were trying to do here tonight for Colorado State. David Vickers and Danny Goolsby are two of those redshirt freshmen, Jerry, in the lineup defensively. Staley a first down carry. Nice spin move for six. Eric Olson made the tackle. A penalty marker is down. The numbers, as you would expect in the first half, dominated by BYU. Right there. The fact that Colorado State comes into the game without McDougal and they cannot throw the football and obviously rushing the ball for only 39 yards in the first half. That's the story of the game. They can't get their offense Also going. right here. Can't keep the football. Yep. I've got one more. You want to circle 19-10 yeah. for me? Because here's what's interesting. BYU throwing the ball so much is throwing it, and time of possession is not lopsided the other way like it is with throwing yeah. teams very often. Yeah, it's not the quick strike. They're kind of uh, they're, they're taking advantage of the, the clock and also just moving the chains and methodically moving the ball down the field. This penalty was very, very important for Colorado State because now they got them in a long yarded situation. Maybe a deflection. They haven't had an interception mm -hmm. yet. It's time for them to drop the ball or have an interception, percentage wise. Atuaya, the lone back for first and 20. Did he catch that? If he caught that, that's spectacular. Carlos Nuno made a one-hand grab. That was tremendous if it was a legal catch. Picked up nine. Nuno's going to come out here and simply just run and get into the seam. Toughest thing to do for this Colorado State defense is try to pick your points on what a catch. He just simply throws the right hand out there and makes the catch. I think he caught it. Wow. Senior out of Modesto, California, Carlos Nuno. Second and 11, Staley. Tried that same spin move again, but Amir Lowe, the cornerback, came up to make the play. Now, this is a big down for Colorado State. In the first half, they were coming after Federick real quick with the blitz, Kirk. 
but he could get the ball off too quick. What do you think now? Do you think they'll play zone and keep everything in front, or to go after him? Well, the, the way they have, at least what they talk to us about, is zone blitz. You know, that's what they're, they're trying to free up a man where they, the offensive line can't account for and also just make the tackle right before the first down marker. Horton and Westbrook are the receivers. Rams back out of the pressure. But get pressure from the front four. And Clark Higgins and Jamie Bennett meet at the quarterback for a sack. Well, interesting there what they did. Clark Higgins comes from the outside. No more dropping that guy off, friends. He comes from the top right-hand corner, makes a good move to the outside, and gets to the quarterback. But the, the Federick, Federick situation was stopped because of the coverage in the secondary. Good coverage, but there, again, you see the claw that he has and the way he can bring people down. He has great strength in his hands. Jesse Sowards kicking to Dallas Davis. Great kick. 55 yards from the 30 Davis. There's the late flag coming in. There was a block in the back. Finally gets tossed in there, and the 17-yard return will be nullified. Colorado State needed something good to happen, and it almost did. Seems like every time Colorado State has an, a break, something they could try to take advantage of is a call, a holding call, some type of penalty that's going to push them back even further. Did you catch that on that sign? These people are very dialed in. In addition to wishing us a happy 20th anniversary, the first live football game on ESPN involved BYU, September of 1984. My favorite sign is welcome ESPN now. Those people are really up with it. Have you seen that sign? Yeah, it's right over there. One of our new networks. They have digital cable out here. Very good system. Sanders pulled down, flagged down. There's the freight train. Rob Marks. hurt himself on that play well, he's a reckless linebacker loves to, loves to get involved in in the run game come up on support and make a big play holding offense declined second down obviously Rob Morris right here in the middle look how he's kind of walked up to the inside now he has such great speed once he realizes the play the, the quickness and the instinct to go make the tackle. And the other thing is, good job by BYU covering all the linemen and freeing him up to make the play. Newton on second and 16. Nice pick up to Rashawn Sanders. Third and five coming up. Well, at the top of the hour, 10 on the east, eight here in the Mountain Time Zone. A chance to remind you that Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen have Sports Center NFL injury updates are ahead, as well as uh, look ahead to the Sunshine Saturday down in college football in Florida and the latest on Sammy Sosa chasing 60. Sports Center coming up after the game. Here in Provo, it is all BYU leading Colorado State 21 to nothing. BYU jumped out early, has had three drives over 70 yards for their touchdowns at Cougar Stadium and. The proud tradition of BYU and great defensive and offensive players continuing, but a terrific defensive player, perhaps their best ever, Rob Morris, was hurt on that last play and comes off slowly. You saw a couple of plays ago, he was looked like he had injured his groin and may have aggravated it more. It looked like he pulled his groin muscle back in pass defense third line. See it? Pull his muscle right there. He pulled his muscle. He's not probably, right now, the best defensive player here. Everybody says that Jason Buck, mm -hmm. that great defensive line, was the best player. But this kid's close to him right now. We asked Lavelle Edwards. He says right there with Buck, yeah. former Outland Trophy yeah. winner. Here's third and seven. Important down for Newton. Incomplete in the Colorado State side. Wanted a flag, but it wasn't thrown. Ashley Robertson on the coverage. First, I thought it was a groin. No, I don't think so. 
I just felt a weird twist. And so on the next play, I turned and just started running. And I, like, oh my, it was just off. So they continue to check Mars as Colorado State punts. It sounded like he hurt the play on, on the tackle that he made. He felt a little yes. twinge there. And then he said when he turned to run to cut to, in pass coverage, that's when he really realized he was hurt. Dion Horenic with the punt. Jerome Dabney tells his teammates to get away. And it will be down at the 23. So after a 43-yard punt, we take a timeout. BYU star defensive player on the sidelines. Check out his injury after this. ESPN's presentation of Thursday night primetime college football is brought to you by Dodge. Do not follow, do not conform, be different. And by Gateway. Call 1-800-GATEWAY and connect with us. Nice to be welcomed back here at Brigham Young University, Provo, Utah, 45 minutes south of Salt Lake City. BYU handling Colorado State 21 to nothing in the first ever game in the Mountain West. Frederick's quick throw is too high for Jonathan Pittman. It'll bring up second down. Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, a lot of concern on the BYU sideline. There is senior All-American Butkus candidate Rob Morris being helped in the locker room by George Curtis on the right of your screen. He's the head trainer at BYU. The concern is possibly a left groin strain, maybe also a strain of the lower abdomen. It'll take him to the locker room, take his pants off where they can examine him without the pads there and see exactly what it is. We'll update you as soon as we hear. Okay, Jerry, so the matchup of McDougal and Morris, which was the feature matchup coming into the game tonight, McDougal never saw the field because of his groin injury, and Morris, with a similar injury, suffered in this game. Federick, thought about long, comes back underneath to Pittman, who is just a yard or so shy of the first down. Tarek Olson, who has been extremely active from the strong safety spot. You know, getting back to Rob Morris, is from a coaching standpoint, Kirk, I don't know about you, but a lot of times I had good football players get hurt right in the beginning of the second half because they didn't warm up properly when they came out, they didn't stretch enough. And that, I'll bet you that's what happened to Rob Morris. He didn't warm up properly. You never do. Yep. You do in the first part of the game, but you never do it half time. Now the sun is, is set. You get yeah. a little, 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 bit, uh, little bit of chill cool. here. It is much cooler than it was at kick. Third and two. Staley got away from one man, but David Vickers helped lead the charge at linebacker to make the play. He comes up hobbling. That's the gentleman who's in because Ula Tuatelli was injured and to Atelli didn't make the trip Vickers got hurt very early in the game the first quarter and now he gets re-injured here in the third I don't know if they traveled enough linebackers they're gonna have to go to a dime cover no way mm. tough night for the injury bug on both sides it's Jesse Sowards kicking to Dallas Davis again oh, the state may take a peek at this one oh. beautiful pick to the 10 59-yard punt is brought back to the 26-yard line. Good tackle by Andrew Fails. Dustin Staley in on the tackle, and we'll step aside. The last glimpses of a beautiful day. He's given way to a cool but perfect mid-September night here in Provo. Perfect for the Cougar fans. BYU's up 21. Dwayne Rock stopped. Byron Frisch showing his agility right off the end to make a tackle. Four second down. Here's Jerry Punch again. Guys, at halftime, Colorado State offense coordinator Steve Fairchild took his quarterback, Matt Newton, in a separate room and talked to him about trying to have some success in the second half to try to help the young quarterback. They look to possibly try to throw the ball quickly over the middle to the tight end and running back to try to get some yardage and take some of the pressure off the quarterback to get some momentum back and also a little bit of confidence. Mike. Thanks, Jerry. You see Newton's numbers in the first half. Not very good. Rolls a pass over the middle to Jose Ochoa. He's third and about eight. Again, another pass play that in second and short, third and short is effective, and it picks up the first down. 
Doc brings up a couple great points that they want to try to keep the ball to the inside where they have at least somewhat of an advantage. They don't feel that they match up real well against the BYU corners, but they've got to throw the football. And now that they're down 21, it's kind of uncharted waters for this Colorado State offense. I still think Colorado State has to try to throw the ball deep to Frank Rice. The guy's caught 17 passes in his career, seven for touchdowns, 41 yards per catch, and they haven't thrown to him. Flag is down, probably for illegal substitution. That's exactly what it is. Looks like Ocho is the man who was flagged. You can have legal substitution. Offense broke the huddle with 12 players. Remains third down. And there you see Ocho. <laughs> As he's, tra he's trying to come off here as an army of them. Good replay to show exactly what happened, guys. Our producers, Tim Corgan, our director, Mike Schwab, our great Thursday night football crew. That rules in because people used to send the guy over to the sideline and sneak him down for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. uh. Nearly intercepted, incomplete. Svoboda didn't catch it before it hit the ground. Elon Edwards, the weak safety, had the coverage. The Rams miss on their eighth third down attempt. They're 0 for 8 in third down conversions tonight. Newton under a lot of pressure there. And again, it's because they're third and long. They're pinning the BYU defense was able to pin their ears back and get pressure. Puts him in, in a very tough uh, circumstance to try to pick up the first down. We should give some credit to a very good BYU defense. Very quick, very active, and they're doing a good job. Their defensive scheme and a game plan is very, very smart so far. Dion Horanek picking to Jerome Gabney. Oh, Gabney stopped right at the 35 where he caught it. Rhett Nelson, who's been the gunner on the punt team, been down there all night. He made the stop after the 43 yard punt. I've been talking about number 26, Luke Stavey, now for two weeks. Watch him here and all the things he does, Kirk. Number one, freshman, he'll pick up the blitz really good. Boom, stays in there good. Second, watch his tough inside. If he makes a nice play on the screen play, now watch his nice body lean. Boom, looks like Ohio State running back. And the last thing I like, watch the soft hands. Now, let me tell you something. Guys are superstars that make big plays. That kid makes big plays. He nailed it. You told us last week, next time we were back here, he'd be the starting tailback. And he started tonight for a play. Did he win it? Yeah. <laughs> Better, it's passes dropped. It'll be second down. Jerry, punch again. Guys, the word in the BYU locker room on Rob Morris is this pretty good. Actually, they think it may just be a lower abdominal muscle strain. They've gotten his pads off. They put some ice. They're going to retape him. They say he is running around in the locker room and stretching. He may, and again, he may be back out. All right, Jerry, that's good news. The good news for BYU as well, they have nine days before their next game home against Virginia. Nine days, and if they're smart, another quarter and a half, because there's no reason to bring back Forget the leader of this team in Rob Morris. Forget him about it. Nothing. Keep him on the sideline. Let him coach like McDougal does. You know how McDougal's coaching? Let Morris coach the other guy. The shotgun, that should be a delay of game, and it is. I'll back him up five gives us a chance to tell you if you were stuck in front of the TV all day on Saturday. Make sure that ESPN game plan is part of your game plan. Armchair quarterbacks everywhere can call an audible simply by contacting the local cable company in your area. Direct TV, the Dish Network, get ESPN's game plan. Watch more than 100 college football games on pay-per-view. Saves you from buying a bad tie on Father's Day. It worked. Quick hitter with Pittman. BYU's group of wide receivers may be as good as they've had in recent memory. We've talked a lot about Kevin Federick over the course of the last two ball games, but one of the things that people need to appreciate about BYU this year is they have great depth at wide receiver. They have speed and margin hooks right there, number 14. Ben Horton's a great playmaker in 88. And then all of a sudden this year, Michael Westbrook and Jonathan Pittman, not to mention 
Chris Hill have been able to come up with some plays. They're very difficult to defend because there's just so many wide receivers that he can go to. You see how they spread it out. Bahu Tahi, first down, Cougars. He's the running back who shares time with Luke Staley. Do these guys look like true freshmen? I mean, do they? No. They don't have that look to them. They look like men. They look like juniors, seniors. They're going to be around for a long time here in Provo. Let's stay. As you say, Coach. <laughs> and when they get that other quarterback in there, that Brett Ingerman, number 18 in practice. You already given him. The... We're, we're going to push Federick for the Heisman here I'm in a few about minutes. Next year. Okay, okay. That guy is a football player. Mark it down on your calendar. <laughs> I didn't think he was a soccer player. Oh, he's a player. First and ten. Donny Atuaya runs it to the 49. Pick up of three yards. A freshman, six foot four, 220 pound quarterback. You already given him that starting job. Yeah, like, they, oh, but that other kid's a pretty good player. Future. Matt Berry. Yeah. North Chow likes Matt Berry as well. Yeah. They have two really good young, two good young quarterbacks. Right there. Here's that. The, the other guy, Engelman's sister, is married to Larry King. Yeah, Talk show. There you go. Robbie Bosco yeah. is a very happy man. He could be a good quarterback coach with those two guys. Not to mention the guy taking the yeah. snap right now. I was going to say, I'll take the lefty seven. Ben Horton to the 47-yard line. But you know what, Mike? That's what used to make BYU so great. Federick would leave, and now comes Ingerman and these other kids. Right. You know, Young would leave, the other guy would come. Wilson leave, McMahon would come in. They always had somebody ready. What's funny is everybody wanted to point the finger at Kevin Federick in the first two years of him playing quarterback and the lack of production with the passing. The, the, the strength of this team over the last two years was the big offensive yeah. line and Ronnie Jenkins and the running backs. Yeah. Now, you have experienced quarterback in Kevin Federick. Look at those numbers and great receivers. This is a whole new offense this year. Four of those receivers are in on third and three. The way again. This is the one downside to the to the leg. You see, you see it all over Good the ball. NFL and at the college Delay. game. Offense remains third down. Where the quarterback gets under, he looks at the defense, waits till the offensive line is set, and then he'll lift his right leg, signaling to the center, okay, I'm ready for the snap. Only problem is if, you, if the play clock's getting down to three, two, and one, sometimes that center isn't aware of that. He doesn't have the time because he's... After he sees that leg lift, he pauses for a couple seconds and then he snaps. They've been caught twice on this series. Another first down across the 35. Ben Horton with the catch there. Federick is certainly putting up numbers, the equal of the quarterbacks who've come before him at BYU. Go back to first team All-America and Hall of Famer Giff Nielsen back in the mid-70s. Then Mark Wilson. Jim McMahon, the 81 All-American, who set 70 records. Steve Young, the MVP in the NFL. Robbie Bosco, Ty Detmer, the 90 Heisman Trophy winner. Steve Sarkeesian, 95 and 96, he led the NCAA in passing efficiency. And the numbers Federick is putting up, and this is third year as a starter, could have us, when we come back in two years, adding Federick's card to those. Making every throw count to Fahu Tahi. Inside the 20. Last week we talked about this over and over and over that when Kevin Federick gets into trouble, he has a tendency to roll this way. He's very comfortable being left-handed. That, that time he got outside of Hagen's, and when he gets outside of Hagen's, it gives him plenty of time to find the open receiver, and that's where he's dangerous. He's dangerous in the pocket, but when he gets outside, he's just as uh, he's just, just as dangerous a quarterback. Great numbers. 272 passing yards. Here comes some more. Michael Westbrook. Ooh. Hard hitting from the Colorado State defense. Were with us last week. Michael Westbrook is the second cousin of the Michael Westbrook of Michigan fame, who's moved on to the Washington Redskins. Also the second cousin of Bryant Westbrook, Detroit Lions. I've noticed also in the second half, they're getting a little bit better 
pass protection. You know why? The defense is getting tired chasing the quarterback. The shotgun drives him crazy trying to get to that quarterback. Well, look at the total plays, too. This will be the 60th play for BYU. Colorado State's right about half that. Doman's in at quarterback. Option play. Bad decision. Lucky break. Stanley lost about a yard. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, I got a very happy member of the Federick family here, Michael Federick from Los Alamitos, California. And Michael owns a container company in Orange County. He ordered that container company closed last Thursday and this Thursday early so everyone could go home and watch the football game. That's true. Four o'clock, we shut down so all the employees can get out and watch the game. Awfully proud of you, young man. What a performance last week and thus far tonight. Yeah, we're, yeah he, has, he has a work ethic that's unbelievable. He works so hard, especially this summer when he came home for the last month. Morning, afternoon, and dinner. Uh, uh, lifting weights, throwing football, running, agility, the whole deal. He told me that work ethic came from you. What was your routine when he was growing up? You said 5.30 in the morning. Every morning he would get up with you and you would go work out? In the earlier years when he played a lot of basketball and baseball, we'd go up at 5.30 and shoot baskets till about 7. Then I'd go to work and, and we'd hook up again in the evening and play some ball, throw ball, shoot baskets, throw some football. All that training paid off. Congratulations, Michael. Go enjoy the ball game. Thank you very much. Mike? Third and 12, better to the end zone. Nearly a touchdown for margin hooks. <laughs> I almost missed that, he said. <laughs> Kevin Federick, his father talking about the determination, the work ethic. A lot of that had to do with his father, and a lot of it had to do with the way people in the public were pointing the finger at him and saying that he wasn't the guy. Here, a perfectly thrown ball right over the defender. Margin Hooks just lets it slip off to his fingertips. He's a nice-looking kid. You ought to see his mother. She's a very attractive lady. Oh, really? Absolutely. Oh, and Potchman is on, guys. Here we are this preparing time. for the game, and you're out talking to the, the parents, huh? 38-yard field goal. And he makes his first field goal of the year. Boy, did he need that. Dad's happy, even though it's three points. Son's having a great night. 274 yards, no interceptions. to enjoy yourselves BYU leading Colorado State 24 to nothing inside of three third quarter minutes to go Owen Potchman who finally made a field goal been great on kickoffs only a couple of his kickoffs this year and the first two games have been returned we're at 4,500 feet of elevation here in Salt Lake City don't let that take away from his strong leg Colorado State felt great about itself. Sonny Lubick's team beat Colorado convincingly. It was 41 to nothing at one point at Mile High Stadium. The victory ended up being 41-14. Then they played Nevada last Saturday. This is a short week for Colorado State. The game with Nevada was tougher than you would have thought. 38-33, and Nevada was driving to win the game in the final minute and turned it over. And Newton's pass is caught by Jose Ochoa, who was hit by six BYU players. They rule him down before the ball came out. Oh, show took a pounding. Mikey, I told you, I, later earlier this afternoon, I talked with Sonny Lubick in his room about his team. He said he really likes his football team. He likes his kid Newton a lot. But I knew right then in my heart he wasn't going to play McDougal. You know why? He just said, I'm afraid to play that kid, and then I'll lose him two or three weeks. I got New Mexico State coming up. I got Fresno State coming up. I think that's why he didn't play McDougal. I think he decided he didn't want to play. He tried to come out for warm-ups. I just don't think he had an inning tonight. Newton to the air again. Gaining some confidence. Corey Wilskenhue was crushed by Dan DeCoy. The flag came down with it. Wollstone Hume, who caught that pass, is best buddies with Rob Morris from back in third grade. And DeCoit is the man in there replacing the injured Rob Morris and picking up the 15-yard flag. Here's our Miller Lite storyline tonight from Provo. Kevin Federick has put on another good passing show. 
BYU's defense has taken advantage of injuries and inexperience on the Colorado State offense to slow them down. The Rams are moving back towards BYU territory for just the second time tonight. And on the money down, as Rick Minter likes to call it, third down, Colorado State has done nothing. BYU has been 50%. Rick Minter, the coach at Cincinnati, when we saw him last, last year, he called third and fourth down the money downs. I like that term. One of the three keys for Coach Minter's team. On first and ten. Is beaten again to the air. Dallas Davis, nice gain, flagged down at the line of scrimmage. Newton took a pop. See the scores going by. Reminder: Sports Center follows our game. Baseball tonight. After that, keep you updated on all those pennant races. Another mistake for the Rams. Byron Frisch is a big, big man. We sat down in a meeting with him last week. Look at the swim technique, and then boom! Big hit. He is, he's got good speed to the outside. We haven't called his name a lot, but he's got great upper body strength, and there he just layered a, he just leveled the quarterback, Matt Newton. When you got knocked down, when the defensive lineman gave you the half-hearted half hand to help you up, did you take it? No. no. Too much pride. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Too much also, pride. Also, you know, one thing, that's why modern day quarterbacks now wear that flak jacket mm -hmm. you can you wear in the old you days can. you didn't have a flak jacket like that goodbye ribs you wear everything you can get absolutely you do now broken up by fresh and recovered by byu's chris hope Frisch again, this time he's going to move to the inside. Just quickness for his size, a man of his size, to be able to come down inside like that at 6'5", 275 pounds. Nice job of showing his athleticism to see the ball and smack it away with his big hand. Ken Schmidt, remember, told us in the meeting that they had some certain tendencies and they were going to slant the line. Boy, they're doing a lot of quick slanting because the B uh, BYU team is not as big as Colorado State. Ken Schmidt is BYU's 18-year defensive coordinator. Play action. Out of the backfield, up to Iowa. Two, the six. <laughs> 26 yards should put Frederick right at 300. Well, here, Rocky Martin showing his inexperience in not being able to stay with the back out of the backfield. Here, a little hesitation, then realizes, well, wait a second, I got this man man-to-man, -man, and by then, he is behind him, picks up a big gain, and oh, by the way, not a bad throw. Right on the money once again. First and goal, BYU, an impressive performance. Luke Staley has two touchdowns. Luke Staley has three touchdowns tonight. State is down and hurt in some key positions. But put this with last week, and I'm really impressed with BYU. He caused the turnover. We talk about the BYU wide receivers, their ability to catch. Here, Michael Pittman standing up the defensive back and pushing him back not allowing him to get anywhere close to your man Luke Staley now Luke Staley the reason why he makes this play so great is he's got that burst of speed 
We talked about it. Some players have that instinct in finding a goal line. Marcus Allen was the best I've ever coached against when he was USC. He had a way of getting into the end zone. This guy has the same kind of tendency, knows that end zone, knows how to get to it. This kid's going to be a sensational football player but before he's finished with his school. That's high prayer. Marcus Allen was the best ever in the ever. National Football League in getting the ball in. His number of rushing touchdowns extraordinary considering his build. He yeah. was not a bowling ball type of back. Yeah. Before the kickoff, Jerry Punch has a word for us. Guys, I got a trivia question for you. You know what happened on this day, 1980, in Bountiful, Utah? Any ideas? No idea. Luke, Luke Staley was born. Today is his 19th birthday. Happy birthday, Luke. <laughs> you want to sing to him? All right. Happy birthday, Donna. Okay. <laughs> it's 20, it's 31 nothing, right? 31 nothing. Now the material's starting to come out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Potsby's kick goes out of the end zone and is a touchback. A reminder that Sports Center will come up as soon as our game is done with Rich Eisen and Dan Patrick. Injury updates from the NFL. So sorry to see the news out of Dallas with Daryl Johnson out for the season. Big weekend of college football down in the state of Florida. We're going to talk about that during the fourth quarter. And Sammy Sosa's chase 460 as the Reds have fallen behind the Cubs in that National League game. Highlights afterwards on baseball tonight. Thursday night football starts your college football weekend from Provo, Utah, where BYU's excellent home record is being added to tonight. Another ranked team will fall at Cougar Stadium. Matt Newton in an unenviable position. Dallas Davis tossed out of bounds, and the flag is thrown on Rob Warcup. Work up the senior reserve defensive back out of Merced, California. Going to get a late hit on War Cup and a bit of pass interference. It'll be interesting to see which way it goes. Gerald Wright in the white hat, the leader of this Mountain West officiating crew. Probably decline that one, wouldn't you? And accept that one. We'll always take the dead ball, 315. Well, as tough a night as this is for Colorado State, this is a very good night in many ways for BYU. When you start thinking about what they've done the first two weeks of the season, Colorado State's win over Colorado makes this even more impressive. BYU has a chance to put together a very successful special season. Well, if you think about the BCS and all the debates yeah. that go on towards the end of the year, there might be a team in Provo that might have say and, and what's going to happen towards the end of the year because granted they have a schedule they still have some tough teams that they have to play Air Force Wyoming Cal who has a good defense but the team that we have seen over the last couple weeks guys they, they, they're going to be favored as we talked about earlier Rest in the way. every game they play and they should be but they, they, look they, tough. they look very tough they throw it, they run it, they stop the run, and they have two corners. We're talking about Colorado State's offense struggling. One reason is the two corners from uh, BYU have done their typical great job. Newton throws to Frank Rice. Isaac Kelly leads uh, mostly second-string defense in there right now for BYU. Byron Frisch, a starter, still out there up front. Here's that schedule that we talked about. Remember the win over Washington already. If you go down here, you look at the Virginia game. After what happened against Clemson, you have to think that they have an outstanding chance there. In my opinion, it's going to come down to this game and to this game, and that's always a yeah. huge game for them at the end of the year. So, and two of the three are played right here in Provo, so they got a great opportunity. That team, California, is not a bad football team. It didn't look good against the Nebraska. <laughs> well, who does, right? Many September team opponents have looked tough. Uh, in Lincoln, for sure, Cal losing 45 nothing in Nebraska. But it brings up the debate. They get to 11 wins, they play their, you know, they, they, they get to that point in the season where they're potentially 11-0, and 0, and then you have some other schools, more formidable teams that you talk about, the, the Tennessees, the Florida's teams like that. Let's just say this. When you play teams out of conference, like these guys are playing in Washington and Virginia, California, you should be rewarded for that more than teams like Kansas State who load up on soft teams. Agreed. But Un they unfortunately, the, 
the, the pollsters and the people that are looking at the votes, they don't, they don't look into that. Invest something in the sport. Reward Lavelle Edwards and the programs for playing good non-conference teams and sometimes taking losses. But in the conference opener in the Mountain West, Luke Staley has made his name known, celebrating his birthday with three touchdowns. The third, putting BYU up after three, 31 to nothing. And now the fourth quarter from Provo, Utah, with Dr. Jerry Punch on the sidelines, Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit in the booth. Mike Tirico, glad you're with us for Thursday Night Football on ESPN. Next week, we come to you from Blacksburg, Virginia. Go check out another team in the top 20, the Virginia Tech Hokies. As they take on Clemson, the ACC against the Big East. Still plenty of football this weekend on ESPN, though. Newton looking long for Redstock. Got it! Touchdown! Heat Redstock. The 5'9 sophomore. He and Newton put the Rams on the board. Seven and a half hour drive from Fort Collins. Finally a reason to cheer. It was a 30 yard pass and catch. He beats number nine, Jared Lee, right there. Remember one thing about this also. We'll look at it in a second. BYU's got their second defensive team in there. Which is a good move by LaBelle Edwards. The point try for C.W. Hurst is good. And Colorado State scores. He's simply going to come in here, coach, and get around. Jared Lee kind of gets lost here and ends up stumbling. Linebacker walk to the outside. Hepstock is a quick, small receiver. Kind of an inside-out move. And Lee just stumbles, falls down. He would have probably been there to bat the ball away. But I tell you what. Matt Newton got crushed, but he stayed in the pocket. I tell you what, when they look at the film, they'll say, that kid's got a lot of courage. You know what? I know they're going to lose this ball game, but they've still got, when McDougal comes back, and the linebackers come back, and all those guys come back, they still got a good football team. All those guys come back. All they, those got guys. A lot of guys. they got a lot of guys. Hurt. Newton's seventh consecutive completion to Redstock. It's the first career touchdown for the sophomore out of Inglewood, Colorado. Wayne Fabet type receiver for this Colorado State team. You run with us at the top of the game, Kevin McDougal. Over a thousand yards a couple of seasons ago. Injury plagued, but still productive last year. Injured against Nevada, tried it in warm-ups, unable to play. And because of that, Colorado State has run for 20 yards tonight. to run Dabney, Dabney wisely takes a knee. A reminder that Sports Center comes up in a little bit with the latest from the NFL as we get you ready for week two. Sunshine Saturday. What a slate of games coming from the state of Florida. And Sammy Sosa's continuing pursuit to be the first man to hit 60 homers in back-to-back -back years. All that with Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen as soon as we're done. Sports Center, your source for sports news for the last 20 years. Remember, the early sports center is now on at 6 Eastern, 4 Mountain, 3 Pacific. Earlier start time for all the latest news. Federick remains in and runs Fahu Tahi for a dozen first down yards. Fahu Tahi is a very fine football player. He's a legitimate freshman, 6 foot, 230 pounds from West Valley City, Utah. I like him as a strong runner. He doesn't have the, exactly the same type of quickness that Staley does, but I'll tell you what, not bad for a freshman. Look at the size in that guy. The Utah Player of the Year had 5,700 rushing yards in his four high school seasons. His parents are from Tonga. He's out, Luke Staley's in. Staley runs out of the gun. Tony Colasione, the sophomore, the only starting linebacker still on the field for Colorado State, made the play. Again, Rick Kroll was injured earlier. Pula Tuatelli never made the trip. Okay, how do you guys feel about this? It's 31-7. to You've got Federick, Staley. you got all those number one guys in there offensively. 
I think this is an opportunity for him to bring in the second unit offensively. Because of morale, these guys practice how they should play. I think they should be playing right now. Cliff Doman, reserve wide receiver, has checked in. A run for Tahi. That should be a first down. And I'll tell you why I'm saying that. If that kid gets hurt next week, First down Inman, those guys got to play. They should see some action right now. Well, he's buckled up. He's ready. Good. Put he's him in ready. right he's now. Ready. Put him in right now and let him play and see what he can do so that if you get Federick hurt, he at least knows what he can do. We'll see Brett Engelman before this quarter's over. Unless Colorado State makes something happen. to Tommy. The 49-yard line. So the Bell Edwards will mix in his uh, reserves as we go through here. Lee, what a great coach LaBelle Edwards has been here. 28th year, 244 victories, the 21 bowl appearances, the quarterback factory, and those 18 WAC titles in the 27 years in the league. Don't let that number blow past you. 18 conference championships in 27 years, including the national championship in 84 with that guy. Here's second and four. Dabney ran it, didn't go too far. One thing about his staff, though, they, they are all registered members of the AARP. They're our second only to Penn State in number of years. But listen, let me, let me tell you something. The four guys, Penn State, BYU, Florida State, Nebraska, that have the oldest staffs in the country are unbeaten. I'm telling you, it's something to experience, but most important, continuity. But I'll tell you what, BYU has the most gray-haired coaches in America. Something to scheduling, too. Yep. That'll be caught a very nice play by Eric Olson to wrap up Ben Horton before he could pick up the first down. Getting back to that point, Kirk. Penn State, BYU, Florida State, Nebraska. Not bad. No. Those are the teams that I'm talking decent, about that decent. have the most experienced staffs oh, yeah. in the league. But I tell you what, BYU would do a great, great commercial for that. What's that thing that put in your hair? Uh, just we don't for know. men. The yeah, just for men. Blends away gray. I tell you what, I'd get that staff right now. <laughs> Blend away gray. Just for men would be a great place to come for BYU. <laughs> Jesse Sowers is punting. Barely got blocked. And it will be a touchback. Do we have an opportunity to take a break here for a moment so I can let out a good laugh? <laughs> Just over 11 left, fourth quarter. It's all BYU. ESPN's presentation of Thursday Night Primetime College Football is brought to you by Miller Lite. Taste a true Pilsner. And by the all-new 2000 Le Saver by Buick. Re-engineered to be safer than ever. That impressive Cougar statue. One of the many landmarks. Just a few steps away from downtown Provo. Cougar Stadium sits. It's all... BYU leading by 24. Matt Newton's pass is complete to Jose Ochoa. Before second down, here's Jerry Punch. Guys, injury starting to mount up a little bit for BYU's Cougars. Both cornerbacks, uh, Brian Gray, you see the senior cornerback from Hawthorne, California, in the locker room right now with a groin pull. And his counterpart across the field, Hashi Robertson, the senior, also has a problem, has a hip bruise. He will not come back in tonight. They will need the long week in the nine days to get ready for George Welsh's Virginia team. They've lost to Clemson, but don't think they're going to come in here and give BYU one. Red stock to the 36. Their whole defense is, is based upon their corner play and, and, the, and the inside linebacker play to Rob Morris and all three guys getting dinged up tonight. It's something that you hope to all be back and not have to miss a game. But if, if, it, if it did come to that and they did have to miss a game, that would really hurt this defense because they're able to lock up for those corners and play man and then free Rob Morris and the rest of the defense to make plays and stop the run. 
Jason Stout has checked in the game. And running back, first time he's on the field this year. Long ball from Newton. He's caught despite the flag. Dallas Davis made the reception. Might be coming back, too. Bob Warcup on coverage. The official who threw the flag never marked where the ball was caught. So it kind of gave you a first impression it was offensive pass interference. It's a good call. One of the things that you have to be careful of as a wide receiver right there with the right hand, you can see that he's pushing off there. But once you push off, you don't see it called that often in college football, but the right hand came up and it extended. Hey, they're going to make the call. Kirk. Defense didn't. Defense Kirk, player didn't make it's it. It's 31-7. to seven. What do you want them to do? Not make calls? I mean, calls? the guy even, he didn't even brush him. Did he? Done. Man, oh, man, that was not a good call. Want, I don't 31 blame, seven, don't I, make any calls? No, that was a lousy call. That guy didn't even hardly touch him. No wonder Sonny Lubick is mad. I'd be mad, too. He pushed off with his right hand the way I saw it. You want to roll the replay? Let's, uh, we'll see it again. He probably touched him with his pinky. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. All right. 21 penalties in the game tonight. And a new play coming in. Okay, you, sh you tell me if he... Right there. What's he doing with his right hand? Oh, jeez! He patted him on the back. Nice play. <laughs> Can you believe that? 31-7, the guy call that penalty. Oh. Uh, but if it was 10 to 7, would it be a good call? That would have been a bad call anyway. Okay. First and 25. Deshaun Sanders, the freshman, gets across the 30-yard line. There's a good side of that situation with both corners being hurt. <laughs> but Gray and Robinson, because of the fact that he's got the second corners in, and if Gray and Robinson get hurt against before the Virginia game, at least these guys know how to play. And the coaches can have a chance to look at him. Robinson's, Hashi Robinson's a very good football player, but they got to, you know, get the well, other guys ready. Well, as you called for the, the backup quarterback, you know, the, the backup corners, I think, would be in at this point anyway. They the, should, they should a be. Of, a lot of the two deeps are in right now. Full confusion, and Colorado State will have to burn a timeout. Nine and a half left before Sports Center. BYU leads by 24. The wave moves around Cougar Stadium. Another crowd of over 60,000. Two terrific crowds we've seen. You'll see Sports Center with Rich and Dan coming up, followed by baseball tonight. So no need to touch the remote. Matt Newton thrown to the red. Late for cup. Frank Rice got across midfield. Here's Jerry Bunchkin. Guys, the BYU sideline, a lot of concern over their Butkus candidate and All-American middle linebacker, Rob Morris, who got an injury in the first defensive series of the third quarter. We'll show you exactly what happened. Now, he told the trainer that as he was coming across to make the tackle for a loss, and watch Morris now, he will come across to make the tackle. He said his body sort of swung around and whipped around in a big area and basically pulled an abdominal muscle. All right, Doc, keep going as Ochoa moves the chains. He pulled a lower abdominal muscle in his left lower part of his abdomen. He's sitting here with an ice pack under that blue jacket. And he also told the coaches, if this were a 7 nothing football game, I would be back on the field. But we're up. I'm going to let this thing ice down and wait nine days and let it heal. So a good thought and a nice, uh, a nice night for Rob Morris. Cavaliers of Virginia to come in. A game you'll see on ESPN2 in nine days. He's a little different. He's really good, too. Newton had completed 12 in a row before that incompletion. Speaking of that Virginia Cavalier team coming in here, the word got out in the Tommy Bowden told some friends of mine that Virginia had no idea how to play the shotgun. Yo! I just want to warn them. These guys can use the shotgun right here at BYU very, very well. So Virginia better get used to that shotgun. If they didn't do well against Clemson, they'll have a heck of a time against this guy, Federick, in BYU. Yeah, Brandon Streeter, who we'll see next week, had a big day. Yeah. They thought he was lighting it up. Wait, wait till they see Kevin Federick. Over 300 yards in Clemson's very impressive victory over Virginia. 33-14. There's Jason Stout, his first carry of the season. Forward for a couple of yards. Well, next Thursday, we will... 
take the Thursday Night Road Show to Blacksburg, Virginia to see Brandon Streeter and the Tigers against the 10th ranked Virginia Tech Pokies. 343 yards, Streeter's numbers. Michael Vick back after missing the game against UAB. It starts with Thursday game night presented by Gateway with Chris Fowler, Rod Gilmore, and Mike Gottfried at 7.30 Eastern and kick off just about 8 o'clock from Blacksburg. Beautiful Lane Stadium. Worsham Field. The Big East against the ACC on Thursday night. Looking forward to seeing Michael Vick in person. He's expected to play. Hopefully he'll be healthy, and it'll be uh, very exciting to see him in action. Really a dual threat running and throwing. Third and eight. Newton's pass is incomplete. Intended for Corey Wolstenhume. Wolston Hume, the intended receiver, best friends with Rob Morris. I mean, we're talking best friends from back in the second grade. This is the first time that they've been on the football field, even though Morris is injured here in the second half, and not been teammates. They were teammates in grade school, Pop Warner, junior high school, high school. The first time they're on the football field in a game and not teammates. Their families are sitting together and a whole bunch of their friends are sitting in the Colorado State section. Because Wilson Hume had a better chance yeah. of getting tickets than Morris. Yeah, that was a good... I thought Morris was really good on that one. Penalty number 22 of the night. He's on BYU. Lee, how much longer do you think LaBelle Edwards would coach? You were joking about it earlier well, seeing him at practice. He's 69 years old. I think he'll keep going. And in fact, there was a couple of negative articles in the paper here recently about who should replace LaBelle Edwards. The guy's not ready to retire. They're, they're absolutely crazy to ever think about this guy leaving this place until he's ready. Fourth and three for his defense. Intercepted. So Tim Anali, the starting defensive end from one town away in Orem, Utah, makes the pick. Jared Lee's deflection made it possible. At the backup secondary in there, but Mike, you mentioned Jared Lee gets a hand on this ball. Should have actually had an opportunity to make the interception, but he was a lot closer than that replay showed. That ball was coming really, really close to him. And the top tackler on this team, Rob Mars, forced to watch. Satema. Satema got the INT. Satema Nally. That's the guy I couldn't say last week, right? Yep. Satema Nally. See? Practice all week. I finally got to say his name. It's a good thing he made the pick. Luke Stanley. coming off the left side. You'll see it, a nice blocking down, man on man. Watch the right guard pull, nice play. And then Staley's got the speed to go almost all the way. I still don't think Staley should be in the game. 31-7 with eight minutes Absolutely left. Absolutely not. When we saw Staley yesterday, you saw that scar on his knee, yeah. and he had injured his ACL. Yeah, I couldn't believe that he had an ACL. He said he had to do it when he was 17 years old, a junior in high school. He's, he said it's come back as strong as ever. So he's quicker, his track times came down. Fahu Tahi carries to the 25. BYU was so concerned about the running back position, he was Ronnie Jenkins, who ran for 1,307 yards last year, second in school history, violated the honor code. All BYU students, faculty, and staff must adhere to the honor code, which, among other things, it, it follows the word of wisdom in the Church of Latter-day Saints, which is the way BYU runs the university. It includes abstaining from alcohol, tobacco, tea, coffee, drugs, among other things. And, the code violation meant Jenkins didn't come back this year. And there were questions about the freshman backfield. Well, they've answered the questions against two good defenses in Washington and Colorado State. Here's Jerry Punch. 
Guys, in high school as a junior, Luke Staley had a problem with his left shoulder. He had a chronic dislocation. He had it operated on. He thought the problem was over. Well, during two-a-days here as a freshman at BYU, he had the same problem occur with his right shoulder. They didn't have time to have it operated on, so he's actually wearing a harness, a shoulder restraint, to keep his right shoulder in position and playing like this tonight. That's Impressive, another reason huh? he shouldn't be playing with 31 to 7. <laughs> no backs. The third mate. Intended for Michael Westbrook. When are we coming back here? Uh, hopefully next year, Lee. Well, let me tell you another thing. They should not have Federick in the ball game with 31-7. They should have the two young quarterbacks playing some in case Federick gets hurt. I'm telling you, I'll say it one more time. That's a mistake. As coaches, you feel better when the guy plays. Look, look at Federick, though, 31 7. So what? All the players want to play. It's 31 7. You put the young kids in. You're a quarterback. How would you feel? I, I agree with your point about trying to get a younger player in there. You don't want to get put into a position where you're chasing a championship and yeah. all of a sudden, God forbid, Federick goes down. All of a sudden, you're looking at a, a guy that doesn't have a lot of repetition. Exactly right. Hutchman on for a 43-yard field goal. <laughs> and that will make him feel much, much better. better. Made one earlier, a little bit shorter. Now connects from 43. <laughs> Mr. Engelman, I think he's going to be in the next time BYU gets the ball. Finally. Rich and Dan come up after the game. That's Rob Morris, the senior defensive leader, talking to Brett Engelman, the backup quarterback. Looks like Engelman will go in, and Federick's night will be done. Another terrific night for Kevin Federick, the senior quarterback. Another touchback. What a great weapon that is for BYU as well. Well, Federick's night is done. It's two terrific nights to start the 99 season. Making two out of three passes a completion. Average 410 yards a game. Five touchdowns, one pick. Two games. Two game numbers, not too shabby. Considering the way uh, his career started, and as, as we talked about all evening long, a lot of figures pointing to him. To see that now he has backs in the backfield, big offensive line that's getting more and more confident and of course all those wide receivers. <laughs> Happy for him too. A really yeah. likable guy when you sit and spend some time with him. Matt Newton's pass is incomplete. Intended for Corey Wolston Hume. Let's go down to Jerry Punch. Well, tonight, guys, we can also debut something new out here in the Mountain West Conference. Take a look at the 480-pound, brand-new AXA Equitable Liberty Bowl Cup. Now, this brand-new cup will go to the winner of the Liberty Bowl on ESPN on December 31st, which pits the Mountain West Conference champion against Conference USA. And, guys, that could be one well of a game with BYU, Air Force, Wyoming, Colorado State, and how about Conference USA with Louisville, East Carolina, and Southern Miss. That should be a barn burner on Espen. The end of the millennium. Rough runs. Jerry, how many pounds did Jerry say that trophy is? 400-something? Mike, Mike, that is 480 pounds. It took about four people. It's on a platform. They had to actually ship in and put it on here. And this cup will actually, if you can get it there, it'll stay in the office of the athletic director of the winning school. It goes to the school and stays there for a year until they come back a year later. And, of course, it so takes it, a year to get it there. Right. Exactly. Probably goes by railroad car. <laughs> You don't think they're put in a BYU football office? That brand new office is up? Might not fit. Might not fit. Newton's pass is caught. But Frank Rice's knee was down at the 35. for the big dinner meal from home was nice. That was enough. Feeling good. Sitting at 2-0. and oh. They should. Beat two good opponents, and they're, they're on their way. This conference has gotten off to a great non-conference start, as mentioned by Chris in the uh, Thursday game night presented by Gateway Show earlier. The two wins over the Pac-10, two wins over the Big 12. 
Davis moves it out to the 43. BYU will certainly move into the poll. Here is the top 10 in the ESPN USA Today coaches poll. Gonna have a little movement in that top 10 this week, guys. Well, we have coach, we have Tennessee, Penn State, Florida, Michigan. Who else is gonna hey, have hey, Miami? Hey, 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 hey. Wait, 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 I know you have them, but My Miami. Team. I'm talking this weekend. Oh. You have you have four of the top 10 in action. And I know your team down here. That's right. I know. Sneaking and here, around. here's preseason. Your team. My team. And this is my other one. What are you guys doing? You have five of the top ten in big. If you count Michigan's test, yes. that Syracuse being tough. Some great games this weekend. Two games within the top ten, which is wonderful on any weekend. Long ball from Newton for Redstock. Incomplete. Hey, give me your uh, your preliminary thoughts on the game in Gainesville as you guys get set to go down and meet Chris for college game day on Saturday. It's sacrilegious to give too much information. I understand. Thursday, I understand. Right. With that said, with that said, I, I think it's it's obvious it's going to come down to who's going to be able to run the football. Everybody's talking about Jamal Lewis and the Florida Gator defense struggling in their first two games. I think they've been conservative. I think you're going to see a little bit more from the Gators and John Ho John Hope, their new defensive coordinator. So. People are, I think, uh, jumping the gun a little bit with the game. The Spurrier's run 28 straight in Gainesville. Yo, just don't forget that. And he has been fuming since last year's game against Tennessee. Newton's toss over the middle is caught by John Eulen, the senior out of Billings, Montana. The one point I would add to that is something you alluded to in the Thursday game night show, Kirk. Tennessee's mindset has to be a little more positive. They are national champions now. They've conquered other hurdles, so they have to go in there with a little more confidence than in past years. I think in the past, when we, we've gone to three right. the last four, it's always Tennessee saying they're going to be there, thinking they're going to be there, but I don't know if they really deep down believe it now. They won two straight SEC championships, the national championship. They beat Florida last year. They're going to go down there expecting to win this game. First and ten for Colorado State. Newton's pass for Redstock is incomplete. On the other side of the coin, yeah, I've seen Florida play six times there yeah. against very good football teams. Uh, they have never the lost a game that I've seen there because teams are as good as them, but you got to be a lot better than Florida to beat them in a swamp. What about the Penn State Miami game? Well, that's going to be a great game. Lee brought up the hurricane problems that the Miami Hurricanes had in trying to deal with the preparation. I think it comes down to Penn State taking control of the line of scrimmage. Last week against Pitt, four sacks and only 65 yards rushing. Miami's much better in the front seven than Pitt, so they're going to have to crank it up up front. His second and ten for Matt Newton and company. His quick passes over the middle have been more effective. Joey Kipari with his first catch. He's a redshirt freshman out of Westlake Village, California. I think the difference between Penn State and Miami will be the place kicking. Courtney from Penn State is a much better place kicker than Boston from Miami. And I think it'll get that close, and Penn State will win the ball game with the place kicker. Heat and humidity could be a major factor. 90 degree weather, uh, up above 90% humidity expected. So depth will become a key also in late the second half. Third and four as Newton tries to keep a drive alive for the Rams. Looking long for Dallas Davis. Stayed in bounds and scores a Colorado State touchdown. 40 yards in front of Luke Staley's brother, Dustin Staley. And the Rams get into double digits. See Matt Newton is still clearly into this football game, and this is something where you, you might be sitting at home saying, "What? What? You know, they're they're down by right right now. They're down by 21 points. Who cares? Slow down, relax, run the ball, and kill the clock." But right now, I agree with what Sonny Lubick is doing. He's building for the future. He's trying to get this team ready for the rest of the season. He still has a young quarterback there that's trying to build confidence. When McDougal comes back, they will be a much better football team because they'll be able to run it. We go for two. Back to the drawing board on that play. Well, Newton had a really poor first half, but he's been forced to the air much more in the second half. He's been pretty good. 24-40 for the night, 271 yards. Numbers are going to look good on the way home. Second touchdown pass of the night. And the sixth of the year. This one brought in by Dallas Davis. Put your feet up time for the BYU fans. They have another home. What a great home schedule. 
Gosh, Washington, Colorado State, Virginia. Three home games to open up. It's good stuff. Onside kick coming. And recovered by BYU. Dan Patrick, Rich Eisen have Sports Center coming up in three minutes and 16 seconds on the Cougar Stadium clock. NFL injury updates. We look ahead to week two of the season. We'll have more on these big games coming up in the state of Florida. Florida State, North Carolina State being the third of the three. And Sammy Sosa's continuing chase for history. All on Sports Center, followed by baseball tonight. So here is Brett Eggerman. Lee, are you happy now? No. He should have been in two series ago. He's got three minutes and 15 seconds to play. It's not enough time. Yeah, I said it again. <laughs> Eggerman's first down carry goes to Will Snowden. Fumbled the ball, but he was down. Eggerman has already served his mission. Once you're age 19, you have the two-year Mormon mission, and you can serve it once you've turned 19, and Engelman did that in Boston, where the mission president, the person overseeing the mission, was Dale Murphy, the Atlanta Braves great, one of the great people ever in sports. We mentioned earlier his sister is married to talk show host and celebrity Larry King. Three minutes remaining, unfortunately, even if BYU were to maintain possession, you're not going to get a chance to see what he does best, and that's let it go. Yeah. He's got a big, big arm, very active, very live. Ball explodes out of his hand, and between he and Barry, it's going to be a great battle to see who wins that starting job next year. Colorado State ball. So these are Pyrrhic points being put up by Kevin McDougal's team, but we pick up the paper tomorrow to look like CSU played a much closer game if they can add a score here. Dr. Jerry Punch still working the sidelines. Doc? Yeah, as we told everybody at the top of the show, what an inspirational player Kevin McDougal is for Colorado State. And one of the reasons he's so well liked is I, what I saw in the locker room at halftime. He was going from player to player, leaning down, looking in their eyes, talking to the individual players, trying to offer them enc encouragement. He also picked up a tray of drinks and was going around like a manager, serving drinks to all the players. What an unselfish young man. He could have been over sobbing in the corner or feeling, feeling hurt that he couldn't play, but he was trying to contribute individually, carrying fruit to the players, carrying drinks to the players, shaking hands, and getting on his knees to talk to everybody and tell them they can come back in the second half. It's no wonder he is so... A great story about a great guy too, Jerry. Wants to be a uh, member of a SWAT team when his football days were done. Sociology major who, uh, when we saw him on Tuesday, he just come out of a uh, exam in quantitative sociological analysis. Kevin McDougal. Did he really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I was there. I had no idea. I spoke to him before you got in the room. You know what I think is, is neat about Kevin McDougal is he's very unselfish, as Doc just talked about. He was trying to sell us under Sean Sanders. Is listen, if we get a turn to the freshman, if I can't go, he's just as good, if not better, than me. He was trying to really pump up yep. his teammates. Third and eight. First down. Picked up by Joey Capari. So what I've seen so far, the more the game is played, the better Matt Newton gets. All right? That's a positive. You get McDougal back where he got some somebody to take the pressure off him, they're better offensively already. Defensively, you got those three linebackers back. They can't be helping you better. This has been a disaster for them in one game, but they could be much better in the next games because of it. Well, their defense, that, that's what this team's about, yeah. defense and running Run the football. Game. Yeah. That's how they beat Colorado 41-14. As you said, Kurt, once they fell behind 21-0, they had to get away from what they do best. Let's run the ball. Intercepted by Jared Lee. Jared Lee may go the distance. No, they've got an angle on him. He'll be pushed out at the 15. With Jinxton. Who did I jinx? 
Oh, well, you, you did. You were talking Newton. about. You were talking about, <laughs> about Newton. How bad he looked. <laughs> what did they just talk about? All right. I said it. I said at the beginning that the one problem I saw in Matt Newton as a defensive coach, I said it before, right? That he burned. Bird dogs, bird dogs, right? That's he, that's bird dog is a term where he looks exactly right there. Look at his eyes. He's looking right there. And the defensive backs jump on his eyes, and he's gone. I think he could have done with it, whatever he wanted with his eyes. Poor decision. No, 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 no yeah, but yeah, still, his eyes are locked right he's in. He's locked it. And Kirk, we saw the films of it this morning, yesterday morning, whenever that was. <laughs> One of those days. One of those days. <laughs> where are we, anyhow? <laughs> <laughs> After Newton's third interception, we're first and ten on the 15. Jerron Daphne runs for a couple. And a reminder that Sports Center, thankfully, is moments away. <laughs> well, you gentlemen have a safe flight down to Gainesville now. Get you down to Fowler. Should be a great, it's a great weekend of college football. I just can't wait to get down to the swamp. What a great, great atmosphere. And when the Tennessee fans come down there, you mix them in with Florida oh. fans. It is as good as it gets. A lot of orange. Plenty of orange. <laughs> Kentucky, Indiana will be right on after college game day at noon Eastern. What a great rivalry. Forward to seeing the Wildcats in action. Gets the Hoosiers. And that ends up being flipped to Dabney. Not much there. Speaking of that ball game, I, I coached it for those Bourbon Bulls, and they're very, very, very competitive. I mean, those are the kind of guys that go after us. The talent is down a little bit in both places. The greatest one I ever had, Mike, and I hate to be personal, but I want to say this. My son, Steve, caught a pass. The next to last play of the game and beat Kentucky 36-30. That would be great. I mean, that's a I'm great... Sure. I mean, I'm going to say it. That was one heck of a great feeling. Should be the final play. With Engelman in at quarterback. And Daphne will get stopped, and that should do it. 2-0 BYU with Virginia coming in next, and you will see BYU in the top 25 when the poll comes out on SportsCenter on Sunday morning. A very impressive performance from Lavelle Edwards' team. Only fitting that the team that dominated the WAC wins the first ever game in the Mountain West Conference behind the arm of Kevin Federick. BYU by 21. With Jerry Punch, Kirk Herbstreit, Lee Corso, Mike Tirico. See you next week from Virginia Tech. Sports Center is next. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Proud to celebrate another moment from our first 20 years. For more, log.